November 12, 2019, Town of Carlisle Board of Selectmen meeting. <clears throat> the agenda is as follows. We sometimes take things out of order for expedience, um, but uh, the, as we stand now at 7 p.m. Uh, community input, 7.05 discussion of new telecommunications tower, 7.30 fiscal 20 tax classification hearing, 7.45 continued poll location hearing <clears throat> at eight. Carlisle Complete Streets Project presentation at nine. The Carlisle Energy Task Force um, at 9.15 Town Administrator Report, 9.45 Town Government Organization Policy and Bylaw Review, which we have every meeting. At 10 o'clock, appointments and resignations. At 10.10 10, Town Admin, sorry. At 9.15, the town administrator is the review of the personnel change requests. And at 10.10, the town administrator's report. At 10.20, the selectman's liaison reports. 10.30 minutes. And at 10.35, uh, we shall be adjourning to executive session for the approval of previous executive session minutes, not to return to um, public meeting. That's and interesting. We have to go into executive session to yeah, we do. accept Mm -hmm. minutes to make them public. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Not that I, is there anybody here for community <laughs> input? And unfortunately, these chairs are such that I cannot see anything. Gary? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hi, Gary. I'm Kerry Kissinger from 207 Elizabeth Ridge Road. And I made some, wrote my comments down. Jen, if you'd like to distribute these, whatever, be great. Um, my comments are about the communications towers. And um, first, I'd like to publicly thank um, Gretchen and uh, Andereg and Larry Sorley for taking the time to speak with me and meet with me over the last year, or, well, month or so leading up to the last uh, special town meeting. So my comments are about the communication tower. Uh, after many, many iterations to find the best coverage with the least impact on neighborhoods, the Public Safety Communication System Working Group developed a four tower plan. Uh, a 190 foot tower at Banda Davis, a 110 foot tower at Lowell Street near Proctor, the use of an 80 foot tower, the Sorley Tower on Westford Street, and the use of a 100-foot tower, the indirect tower, on Bedford Road. The Banda Davis and Lowell Street towers are town-owned and are on town property. The Westford Street and Bedford Road towers are privately owned and on private property. Every member of the working group approved this four-tower plan as optimal and recommended it to the town in 2017. Unlike the town-owned Lowell Street and Banda Davis towers, the Westford Street and Bedford Road Towers are both owned by SBA Communications and have mostly identif identical terms and conditions for their use. There's been some confusion regarding who owns or controls the tower on Westford Street. However, Larry Sorley, the landowner, wrote me on November 10th and said, and I quote, I checked my records and contrary to what Dave Friedman has stated, T-Mobile does not hold the ground lease Mobility Investments acquired T-Mobile's ownership interest in the cell site and the lease in 2009, at which time the lease was assigned to T-Mobile or from T-Mobile to Mobileet, and then T-Mobile became the subtenant of Mobileet, and as of April 2, 2012, Mobileet Investments was acquired by SBA Communications. So bottom line is both of these towers the one on Bedford Road and the one on Western Street are owned by the same company, SBA Communications. At the Bedford Road site, the landowner, upon consulting with the fire department, wisely negotiated a term whereby public safety equipment could be co-located on <clears throat> her tower for a buck a year. The Westford Street tower, however, has no such contract term. And in addition, the 80-foot West Street, Westford Street Tower needs to have an additional 10 feet of height added to make it uh, satisfy the 95% coverage limit for the town that was sought. 
This addition to the Westford Street Tower was estimated to be, for the additional 10 feet, to be about $100,000, and this cost estimate was included in the $2,961,000 that was approved for the original plan uh, and its contingencies to cover unforeseen circumstances back in 2017 at the town meeting. The difference in contract terms between Bedford and Westford came to light after the town had approved the plan in 2017 when we learned that SBA Communications was demanding an annual rental fee of $15,000 versus a dollar a year and a 4% escalator for the town to co-locate public safety equipment on the Westford Street Tower. The town was caught with no bargaining leverage. Tim Goddard appealed to SBA, reminding them that they were charging virtually no fees, fees on the tower in Bedford Road. And then SBA came back and agreed to reduce their rental demands from $15,000 to $13,320 annually. And instead of a 4% escalator, a 3% escalator. So Tim negotiated a 13% discount with absolutely no leverage to do so. So attaboy, Tim. <laughs> Well, this was still deemed to be unacceptable to the town, and the working group under the leadership of Dave Friedman wasted no time in seeking an alternative solution. Their quick response and thoughtful planning resulted in a revised plan that would replace the existing SBA Westford Street Tower with a town-owned tower on town property on Westford Street. This new town-built tower would cost approximately $425,000, however, the net added cost of doing this new tower was estimated to be only $220,000 since we had some cushion in the original $2.9 million that was approved. Uh, it was approved uh, to spend the extra $220,000 at town meeting on October 7th of this year, a special town meeting, and I think it, it passed by about a 21 vote margin. This was town meeting was never about whether the town valued the safety of our first responders. We made that loud and clear in 2017 town meeting when we approved nearly $3 million to support this need. It was, however, about whether to spend $220,000 on what was posited to be the only viable alternative to spending money with SBA. The working group and David Friedman are to be congratulated on their diligence and their hard work, their efforts have resulted in the town having an alternative solution to the demands posted and posed by SBA. This alternative solution has also provided the town with negotiating leverage that it didn't have prior to October 7th of this year, special town meeting vote. Besides the unanticipated costs that SBA had proposed with a $13,000 annual rental fee, the working group and the selectmen have also been concerned that a 20-year contract on the Westford Street Tower, it's due for renewal in 2026 and needs to be renegotiated at that time with an uncertain outcome. And this is said to be yet another reason for the town to build and own a tower and be in control of it rather than relying on an SBA tower. Yet it also makes the case for returning to the negotiation table with SBA. So, to put that into perspective, if the town were to build a new tower as proposed on October 7th special meeting, SBA, who have the existing Sorley Tower, would regard us as a competitor and they could stand to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in the process in lost revenue. Now we've been focused on this Westford Street Sorley situation versus building a new tower, but we may be missing something that's equally or even more important than that. The real Achilles heel of the plan for the communication system may not be the Westford Street Tower, but it could be SBA's advantage over the town when it comes time to renegotiate the lease on the Bedford Road Tower. We currently have no rental exposure on that tower, a buck a year. The Bedford Road Tower's 25-year contract, however, their contract comes up for renegotiation in 2029 just nine years from now. For this renewal process, the town, once again, will be at the mercy of 
of uh, SBA and um, we'll be going to them hat in hand, viewed by them as a competitor with no bargaining leverage and no alternative solution. Will they demand $15,000 a year on a 4% escalator for their use of the tower on Bedford Road? They're required by statute to allow us to co-locate our stuff on their tower. We, we have to, they have to let us do it, but we would have absolutely no power to make them do so for a dollar a year. They will be able to charge anything they like. Will we then ask the town for another $425,000 to build yet another town-owned tower somewhere off Bedford Road? So you see, building a new town-owned tower on Westford Street will not place the town in control of its destiny since SBA will remain the private firm calling the shots at Bedford Road that could make or break our system's successful continuance. We need all four towers or we don't have a system. Reestablishing, uh, we need this, oh, we need to use this opportunity to use our newly acquired bargaining power to force favorable terms for both Westford Street and Bedford Road Towers. And we need to do it now before we start construction because then we'll lose it, we'll lose the, the uh, leverage. So reestablishing negotiations with SBA will, if successful, provide the certainty that the town needs to implement the 95% coverage communications plan as originally envis envisioned. If it's successful, it'll also obviate the need to spend in another $220,000 for a redundant tower now, and potentially another $500,000 somewhere off Bedford Road nine years from now. I had originally suggested that we seek a $3,000 annual rental fee with a 2% escalation clause from SBA for the Sorley Tower. Now that would provide a solution we could live with. SBA offered us a 13% discount just because we asked for it. Well, we may not get a 3% or a $3,000 term from SBA, but we can address the uncertainties and the costs of both SBA sites with newly negotiated terms and conditions that covers both Bedford Road and Westford Street. And we can feel confident that we have done our best to provide coverage for the town, to keep unnecessary costs in check, and to mitigate the impact on the West, uh, Westford Street neighborhood. Well, that's my two cents, and I really appreciate your putting this on the agenda today, and I thank you all for listening. Thank you. Any further citizen input? Nancy? <coughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, that doesn't. Uh, it doesn't do anything. On the TV. Oh, okay. It's your television audience that can hear you. So somebody at home probably just said yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually I can't hear the selectmen. But anyway, that's another question. Okay, I'm Nancy Pierce. I live at 1152 Westford Street. Um, I injured my hand this weekend, and I was so I was not able to write a letter. Um, and so my remarks are going to be more disjointed because I haven't been able to write. Instead, I've been marking notes on. I just, there are, um, I don't have anything really coherent to say, but there's some things in the letter that David Friedman wrote me this weekend that I feel are really important to uh, correct on, for the record, so to speak. Um, and I'll just go through them, not in any particular order. Um, one of the things that, uh, <clears throat> he goes into at some length in the letter is the fact that um, the coverage is completely, uh, is, is totally inadequate uh, on the Sorley Tower compared to building a new tower. And um, one of the things that I want to question is he says um, that they told the town when we presented the 2017 plan that we were compromising coverage to not place towers where we had originally proposed in the middle of subdivisions and so on. Um, and one of the things that I really feel that somebody should have questioned before this point is if that was information, as he says later, that was if the superiority of coverage 
on the new tower, as he says later, was so important and so critical. Why did it take two years to find that out? It suggests possibly that there may have been something flawed about either the research that was done at the time or about the decision-making process. And I think that it, it, maybe that doesn't seem to be so important now, but to us who live in the neighborhood, it is important because it seems as if the claims that the coverage is better may be some sort of justification or rationalization for something else that went wrong in the process of making the decisions in the process of negotiating the lease that has not come out in public and that maybe should be better understood before the town goes through uh, the process of committing itself fully to this plan. Um, I have gone back through um, all the mosquito coverage that I could find about public meetings about this plan and in not one of them, except possibly for the fact that uh, Chief Fisher made a statement at uh, the special town at the annual town meeting in 2017 that the plan uh, was going to be good enough, but wasn't great. Something I'm paraphrasing. I can't find anything in any of the meetings, even up to the one that you had last May, where you first approved building this tower, that said anything about the coverage being substantially better by building a new tower. It was like something that just came out of nowhere. And as I said, why is it important to go back over this past? I just wanted to, I, I just felt like I wanted to correct the record. It wasn't clear at all from any of the public coverage that I saw that the town had been warned that there was something flawed about the plan. Maybe it happened in private meetings, uh, but I couldn't see it in the coverage. I also, um, there's some talk about, here about money that I can't, really quite, um, that I couldn't really qu quite understand. Um, he, he criticizes Mr. Kissinger for saying that the funds um, to, uh, I think, to build the Sorley, to, to co-locate on the Sorley Tower have already been approved um, as if they hadn't been, but it, there was a budget summary that Mr. Friedman submitted to the FinCom in August that uh, it specifies $179,000 that had supposedly been in, included in the original appropriation. So, and I think the point about that is that it does not require a new appropriation to equip the Sorley Tower, as I think he's implying. I'm not really quite sure. I couldn't really understand it. Um, another point that I want to make is about um, the decisions that. Um, that he, what he says about the special town meeting decision, he implies that the special town meeting decision mandates that the selectmen must build the new tower and must not spend any more time reconsidering negotiations. In fact, at one point he says, um, I can't find it now, he says that um, <clears throat> he calls it a technicality that the town meeting vote in 2017 authorized leasing at 1022 and he basically says the selectmen should not ignore the, the subsequent vote in October 2019 to abandon the 1022 site and appropriate funds for the tower at 1110 Westford. I looked through Article 5 pretty carefully, and I did not see anything there that says that the selectmen should abandon the thought of leasing. In fact, it talks about how the equipment may be located on an existing tower. Furthermore, Article 21 at this year's annual town meeting authorizes the selectmen to lease at, at the Bedford Road site and at the Westford Street site, although the addresses are somewhat confused. And as far as I can tell, that article passed. So you do have the authority to decide to lease should you, it's true that there was public sentiment expressed that you should build the new tower. And I'm not arguing that that's not true. I'm just saying that it's also not true that you don't have the authority to lease. Um, I also would question, I agree that town meeting is a good place to debate and discuss and decide on these important questions, but I would also question the process that led up to this because as far as I can see, there was very little public discussion of this. There were many one-sided presentations at various boards, but except for a couple of times when the abutters were rude enough to interrupt committee meetings, there has been very little questioning of 
the basis or the or how rational this plan actually is. Um, thank you for listening. Is there anybody else for community input? Seeing none, we're going to move to our first. Let's see, it's seven twenty. Um, our first discussion item is the new telecommunications tower on Westford Street. Um, we've received uh, some letters, some presentations, and um, I think they merit a response. Um, I was in touch with the uh, town council and um, I was informed that the town is not permitted to negotiate a lease for a price that exceeds 35,000 in total without following a procurement process described in Mass General Laws, Chapter 30B, Section 16. And the town did not undertake this procurement process because we didn't expect we were gonna have something over $35,000 in total. Um, so that if we were to try to do anything about leasing, it wouldn't be a simple negotiation. We have a, a whole process that we would have to embark on, which I don't think is um, something that I would like to do, uh, given how, the fact that- How exactly would that work? I'm not, I'm not- Because so, you can't go out for a bit if there's only one, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, well, the, the town would issue a request for proposals to any landowner who uh, had, had a gotcha, parcel gotcha, of gotcha. land that fit a certain uh, criteria, yeah. which gotcha, we would, gotcha. you know, and, yeah. you know, I mean, chances are, you know, there would be very few, uh, you know, people that could respond to such a, uh, an RFP. But that's yeah. how you identify a site. Yeah. If that were acceptable, then you'd be authorized you know, by town meeting vote to negotiate a lease on that property. Okay. But there's a whole uh, legal procurement yeah, process yeah. that right. you know involved in identifying the site. I assume that, which that takes weeks. That yeah. procurement that RFP would involve like uh, they're already there. There being a tower that we can put it on. That not could, just, that we're could not be just one of the town's land, requirements. Right. right. That, that could, could be, be one of the requirements. requirements. Yes. To narrow down. Yeah. The number of respondents <laughs> certainly. Yeah, pretty significantly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't see us doing that. I mean, we um, have already got, gone off for bonds. We have gotten the money for this. I believe we're expecting to move forward. And I don't think it would be really wise to spend another year trying to get this ironed out um, when we have a, had town meeting. We have a procurement. We had, beg your pardon? We have procurement. Yeah. Uh, yes. And we've already bought the equipment, and it needs to be installed. Um, so uh, I'll open it up to discussion. I mean, I think it's looking at what probabilities are. I would think it is highly unlikely that they would go from thirteen thousand dollars to eleven hundred dollars a month. That's a huge cut. Uh, I just, I just don't see that as, as a viable option. Uh, the, the effect, the, the, the argument that we would have leverage, uh, I don't think it's a very strong one. And, and the Bedford, using that as an argument about the Bedford Road Tower is speculative at best. And it's nine years down the road, yeah. um, not five years who down knows, the road. Who knows we'll even own it by then. Yeah. It changed hands twice in the last year. I guess I, just to address a little bit the um, the process of how we got there, um, the um, the committee did look at a lot of different locations, um, focusing pretty heavily on um, kind of easily accessible, very you know high points in town. 
Um, and one of, you know, uh, some may remember that, you know, one of the places we had was, uh, you know, clearly a different ex section of town, but um, uh, over near Esterbrook, I forget the name of the road. It's not Bella Hills. It's the other one that goes across it. Um, there was, uh, you know, kind of a triangle in the road that we had, you know, Hill. 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 Indian Hill, Hill. Indian Hill turns that. into it, kind of, sort of. Yeah, but anyway, spot there, yeah. um, there, there was a triangle there that we considered putting it in, um, and there was um, the Heald Road um, triangle mm -hmm. uh, that we considered putting it in. And most of the town land that you know kind of jumped out at us uh, were things that kind of were in these triangles, <laughs> and um, so we decided let's find an alternate site and that's that's really how we ended up at 1022 um, bedford road um but all of the coverage maps that we saw were poorer coverage than had we been able to put it at healed road um you know there there wasn't anybody really willing to lease anything to us on the Heald healed road hill um and uh so uh, it is a poorer coverage um, where we are now than what we initially thought we would get, um, and this road, this this site is is clearly giving us better coverage than what we had compromised with in going with the, the tower on Bedford Road, the existing tower on Bedford Road. Um, uh, you know, I, I I do believe that at town meeting. Um, you know, there there was shown the slides of the coverage, um, and there there was a difference in coverage, and mm -hmm. and the new one was better coverage, and um, I think it was um, uh, um, Matt Matt Spotek Matt is it Matt Yeah Yeah um, uh, that you know he pointed out the coverage um, difference when when he spoke I believe it was him. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're focused, you know, not just on the cost, but also on the improved coverage and um, ensure that, you know, we're, we're considering that um, and considering the fact that that was presented to town meeting and the project was decided by town meeting. Um, so I guess that's what I have to say. And it was decided by two thirds vote, not a simple majority, two thirds vote of town meeting. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think the unfortunate thing is if, you know, the lease had just continued as it was, we wouldn't even be in this situation, yeah, right? We, right. The, the town agreed, you know, that while the coverage was not ideal, it was best based on the system that we've got, right? And, you know, we based it around having towers in those locations. Um, you know, it, it's unfortunate that, that that situation changed, you know, I mean, and it, it forced our hand, right? And... Um, you know, I, I you know, I, I, the thing is, you, you, you know, when you're going to build your own, you might as well build it better, right? I, you know, I mean, we're not going to settle for poor coverage, so you build it better, you know, to make the system ideal. Unfortunately, it's got to be essentially in the same location as the, the Sorley Tower now, because that's really what everything was designed around. Um, well, you know, I, 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 and that's where the town land that's is. That's where the town and that, land and that's, is. And that's, well, conveniently, conveniently enough, because honestly, what if we didn't have that town land, mm. right? What? What would we be doing? You know, we'd probably end up having to eat the lease and then, you know, settle for the, the poor coverage, right? Um, but, you know, we're in the situation where the, the, there was a, a tax take and we did have the opportunity to do this. You know, I think the, the you know, Kerry points out that, you know, there, well, I appreciate the effort he's put into it. Yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of thought has gone into this. Um, you know, I do like the idea of being able to negotiate, you know, if you have two towers, um, you know, and two leases, maybe you could get a better deal. I, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know this company. I, I've never negotiated with them. You know, I have no idea which way they would go. I think one of the things we need to think about is, you know, nine years from now, <laughs> how do we focus on that tower? Let's come up with a plan starting now. Yeah. So we're not in the same situation where they try to jack the, the rate up to something ridiculous. Um, my time up. <laughs> Usually I get a hook or a buzzer. Um, that's, that's more polite. But it's, just, it's unfortunate that... That, that we're in the situation we are now, you know, and, and um, you know, I just, I, I think that this is ultimately the best 
situation um, of the best solution for the situation. It's unfortunate, but um, it is, it, it's kind of what um, where we are. Unless we want to start over, which I don't think we're <laughs> too much yeah. involved. No, yeah. I don't think we want we to can't. start over. Yeah. I, I do want to say, as I said, um, when uh, when we initially talked about putting out bits on the warrant, I mean, I think I think this isn't a light decision, right? I mean, uh, our making this decision, our putting this before town meeting and getting them uh, and and getting their agreement that this is what we should be doing, and this is what we should be spending this money on, doesn't mean we're going to have to make other hard decisions, right? We've already pre-spent. Um, some yeah. of the next year's money, but we all felt that it was important enough um, that we do that, and you know that that we that we really sharpen our pencils when it comes to this budget year, um, because this this tower is important to the functioning of the, the communication system. So, um, Carrie, let us finish our. Okay. Point of information, and you mentioned that the bonding had already been established as of this afternoon. Checking with town hall, the bond has not been finalized at all. Has already been There's no, we're not committed to any bond for a new tower at this point. And uh, just, just so you know that, I think the uniqueness of the site would require would not require a year to renegotiate anything. It's probably a couple of months, according to Tim. Do we want to revisit this project? <laughs> I'd like to ask David a question if I can. Sure. Or, or Chief Fisher, <laughs> or Bill. You're on the tower committee, right? Um, it, uh, is there a timeline that requires like site work being done and everything before snow falls and before freezing? That was my question okay. to David. I'm gonna just let us discuss. Maybe well, if we have other questions, that just might be better for us to. Tim, do you have a anything to add to this? Well, I, I, just to be clear, the, the purpose of the finance director being here tonight is ask the board to authorize the debt later this evening. That's right. I mean, yeah. so, so I mean, we're ready. I mean, we went to market last week, and, yeah. and we have a debt authorization for the board to approve tonight. Right. So that's that's the next step before we get the money. We've got to, the board has to approve the debt based on the town meeting vote. So it's not yet done, but it will be done. Will be done by the end of the night. We need a motion. I think we need a motion. Is something we move? Well, I think we have a question on the table: is whether we um, revisit this warrant article or not. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be a definite decision, so that it's very clear. Okay. Can I say something? Go ahead. Um, so, I, you know, if you want to look at this in terms of, um, I, I won't bother with correcting some of the things that were said before, I can reassure you about the differences between the Bedford Road Tower and the 1022 Westford in terms of being concerned about what, what will happen in nine years. But I think the key thing to think about when you, you sort of talk about um, reconsidering this is, you know, what basis would you have for making a decision? I mean, if, if, if one contacted SBA. And by the way, S it was SBA who told us that T-Mobile had the ground lease. And it was SBA that told us and told town council that T-Mobile shared in the revenue. So that's not just something that I made up. It was communications that Tim had and that town council had with SBA. Um, but, you know, at, at what point, and again, we're not comparing apples and apples, but at what point, you know, is it worth looking into this? Is it you know, $3,000 at 2%? Is it, 
$10,000 a year at 2.5%? Is it $6,000 at 3%? I mean, you have no basis for making a decision if you got new information as to what was worth doing this. And that's why I made the point about town meeting is we went through a whole process, not just with you, but with FinCom and full debate at town meeting where everybody was able to weigh in on, you know, what it is that they're voting on and what they were being offered as an alternative. You don't have any basis for dealing with any information you might get through pursuing this. And it just, it, it, it's just arbitrary. Um, whereas the whole process at town meeting was, you know, fairly debated um, with, you know, pros and cons letters in the mosquito ahead of time. Um, and, you know, serious discussions and, and a lot of requests for information from FinCom um, leading up to that. And, you know, at the end of the day, what they said was that, you know, they listened to the police chief and the fire chief who said, you know, this is what we need to have happen. Um, you know, you, you don't have any basis to go against that in terms of putting a dollar value on, you know, where the tipping point would be. So it just doesn't, I think doesn't that's make the point any that sense. Nathan was making. That it's not just a matter of dollars, it's also that we get a much better product at the end of the day, which was we're willing to compromise because in order to not put a second tower and because there was a tower there and because we well, thought it wouldn't be that much. It, it actually was because we thought it was the only option we had. And what we have discovered, and I don't, you know, you can say unfortunate or, or, or fortunate, but because of this, we actually will be able to have a system that works better. Yeah. And the, the things that were said at town meeting about the issues that they have with trainers trainees who are in basements and can't communicate or, or Matt's comment um, won't happen. And, and there, there wasn't a guarantee with that with the other systems. So, you know, in terms of providing what our first responders need, we are in a much better place with what we're working on right now. I, I do have a concern with the, uh, if, we get, if we did get into negotiations, we probably would then, we would need to bring in the Bedford Tower those negotiations yeah. at the same time, which I think would make negotiations significantly extended. Yeah, and, and very tricky. And very tricky. I'm not sure we want to go there. And I'm not sure we're capable of it yeah. legally because of state procurement. Um, well, perhaps, yes. But Just for the record, the, the, the only negotiation that the town can do is with the tower owner. The, the town can't do any negotiation with the landowners. And that's, that's the lease that's up in 2026 for 1022 and up in uh, you know, nine years hence or whatever at the other one. We're not talking about negotiating with the landowners. We don't have any relation with the landowners. And there's nothing that SBA can guarantee us in relation to what their, their negotiations are with the landowners because they don't control the landowners. So, I mean, to be clear what you're talking about when you're talking about negotiating, you're not even negotiating with mm -hmm. the parties that are the ones that, you know, control whether or not it's on their property or not once their initial four terms of five years leases are up. It seems like we're, we'd be asking them to negotiate the unknown, right? Right. You know, we'd be asking them to negotiate a longer lease or whatever when they have no idea what they're going to be able to negotiate when that when they start those negotiations um, at the end of the lease. Right. And we will have that bridge crossed with the Bedford with Anderig, uh Tower. Mm -hmm. And I agree with uh, Luke that we should get on it now <laughs> ASAP um, or, in, in that, you know, Give ourselves enough lead time to get that done, and yeah, I'm not even sure that what we what, what what we can negotiate. That was my point, right? Um, what we because might. they don't know whether or not they don't know whether or not the landowner is going to renew the lease or what right. those well, terms would be yeah, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So I, I think that answer. that's it, it, well, it's we it's a problem for another, for another piece day. Of land, for instance, right. and being right. having something in our back pocket, a Plan B or a, or whatever. Mm -hmm. there, there are big differences between the two at. at on Bedford, at the Bedford Road Tower, we are well below all of the leased spaces for carriers. And, and none of the carriers wanna be 
at the level we're at. Whereas at 1022, we would have been at the top spot and that's the one that would be, and it's, it's as high as it can go. And so they're, they're extremely different in terms, you know, it's not, it's, again, they're not apples and apples. Yeah. Um, there's much less concern there. And because there are five tenants, four or five tenants at Bedford Road, um, it behooves SBA to maintain that tower, whereas their income at the other one is, is minimal because there's only one tenant. So you know, there's much less concern about the Bedford Road Tower than there is at the, at the Westwood. I would move we move forward with the uh, new tower at Westwood. I have a second for that motion. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you all. And we wish there were alternatives. We but... wish there were alternatives, but. Okay. We have five. The tax classification hearing going to be. Um, going to be continued to November 26th, so I'd open the hearing and ask the board to uh, continue with to Tuesday, November 26th at 7.30 p.m. Okay. Um, can I have that motion, please? I think you just open it. What's that? Oh. You could open the hearing. Yeah, I think the, you just oh, you open it. You want me to open it? <coughs> yeah. Uh, but I have to read something, though, in order to open it. The legal notice is, okay. is in there. Okay, in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 56, the Board of Selectmen uh, will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, November 12th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. in the Town Hall, Clark Room, 66 Westford Street, Carlisle, Mass, or 1741. Said hearing will be held to determine the percentages of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of real and personal property for the fiscal year 2020. The Board of Assessors will be present at the hearing to provide all information and data relevant to making such determination and the fiscal effect of the available alternatives. And as of that hearing, I now declare that hearing to be open and I am um, going to continue that meeting. Entertain a motion to continue. I will entertain a motion to continue the meeting to 7.30 on November 26th. So moved. Second. November 20th. Isn't it? I probably right. weren't going to have. Oh. Yeah. Is that one that's canceled? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. No. Okay. Two days before Thanksgiving. Christmas, 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 Christmas. Christmas. No, we are going to have canceled Christmas Eve. Oh. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Swap. So yeah. I have a motion to continue. Well, I think second. I heard a second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Pr you proud? Could you just give me is the date for that? Is it Twenty-six November at seven thirty. I don't think so. No, it's not a doesn't have to be a roll call vote. Um. All right, seven forty-five. Um. It's almost seven forty-five. Do we have somebody here for the Curve Street poll location? Oh, yay! Have a seat, please. Seat. Yep. You'll have to. Okay, we have to wait two minutes. Um. Good time. Till seven forty-five. <laughs> I don't see anything in here that we can do in two minutes. No. It's not even two minutes. <laughs> we can set that clock um, to be correct. Maybe we can do that. Just set it to not, seven forty-five. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not far off. It's off by a minute. Yeah, it's off by yeah. a minute. Seven forty-four. Okay. We do this to put pressure. Fun. Yes, yeah, we, this we have is because you didn't show up last yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> so just, really just to remind everybody, I can fill that up with, um, that this was a meeting which we opened last week, oh, not right, last, last, last meeting, and um, it's concerning the joint petition of Verizon New England Inc. and Eversource Energy and Star Electrical <clears throat> to locate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures including the necessary anchors, guys, and other such sustaining and protecting fixtures to be owned and used in common by the petitioners along and across the following public way, Curve Street. 
They want to place one jointly owned pole number T.37S slash E.37S on the westerly side of Curved Street at a point approximately 460 feet southerly from the center line of Fifth Street. And it is now 7.45 and we can entertain a presentation. I'd like to give us one. Reopen the meeting. I beg your pardon? Do you want to just first reopen the meeting? Reopen the hearing? Yeah. I, th I yeah. Thought, thought I just did that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, members of the board. My name is Steve Bigley. I work for Pike Communications. I'm a contractor here to represent the interest of Verizon New England. Okay. And they want to place a new pole to replace. There was a tree there. The tree was damaged in a storm, I believe. Uh, there was a guy wire that held up the pole line. Once the tree came down, the pole line now is threatened to lean back into the woods. So we're requesting uh, permission to place a pole where the tree was. So you were connected to the tree before? Oh, I see. Yeah. The guy wire is, the, the pole is not a, like a telephone pole. It's a new pole to gut, to It is a telephone pole, but it has one function, to hold the to pole line up. To yeah. stabilize the other pole. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ah, oh. okay. I was okay. wondering why you're putting another pole across the street. <laughs> um, and that's better than putting another pole like next to it or what's doing thinking yeah what's <laughs> i mean because they're going to have the, a big wire across the road yeah right? yeah and because of the curve in the street that will naturally pull the weight of the wires will pull those poles back into the woods so we need something across to hold it up mm -hmm. ah okay so it's really just a matter of physics and it's not a matter of putting absolutely it's a matter of physics. Existing yeah. Pole. yeah right anybody have any questions other than my inane ones <laughs> No, I, other than, yeah, so there's going to be something going across the street now, right? Yeah. But, there will be an so attachment how, how wire both it? from Telcom and a power. Okay, so, and how high is it? Uh, minimum 18 feet. Yeah, so it's high enough yes. for <laughs> anything in Carlisle. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, so there's going to be power and? Just a wire. There, there will just be a cable. Just a cable, yes. It's so called a guy wire. Yeah, yeah. 10M strand just to support it. Okay. And is the power just going across to feed that one? house no, that, no no it will, there will be, be no feed going across no. there just support cables so it's just so a, what? it's just a a a support the cable there's no power no there that, is no power yeah i think you just said there was power. well power will attach at their connection on yeah. the main pole which is pole 37 across the street and they will run a wire across the street not carrying power oh just gotcha okay 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 yeah. i thought you were saying that power was going across the street. i think he's saying yeah. power company will do it our company not. gotcha <laughs> power. gotcha gotcha <laughs> yeah i <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And point of clarification. Excuse me. There was a wire there before. Yes, there was attached to a tree. tree. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. That's what happens when, when you yeah. attach things to trees. They <laughs> first of all they grow and then they fall. Yeah. 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 And we can't wait for a new tree to grow. No. Okay. <laughs> um. Are there any neighbors wait, wait. here who want to? Neighbors. Anybody else? This is a hearing, open open hearing, so we can invite people oh, to the comment. Basically, across from Peg Gladstone's house, is that right? I don't know Peg. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what it yeah. looks like. Right? <coughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> what I'd like is the motion to approve the petition and then, then the motion to close the hearing. I move the uh, petition as written be approved. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Then we close the vote, right? Um, it can be done either way, yeah. apparently. Okay. And um, I've, I've um, been told that it's actually better to close the hearing after the vote, so that yeah, if there is any more discussion, okay, uh, it can still happen. So I move I, to approve the petition submitted by Verizon New England Inc. and EverSource. Energy N Star Electrical dated September 25th, 2019, and to authorize the chairman to execute the order for joint pole location on Curve Street on behalf of the board, provided that before beginning this work, Verizon New England and Eversource Energy will consult with the town of Carlisle Police Department on traffic safety issues and the public Department of Public Works regarding a performance bond. Second. Okay. And is has that been done or that will follow our vote tonight? I will follow our vote tonight. We're asking permission to do it. Okay. 
but I mean in terms of checking in with the police and the EW. In other words, he doesn't get his papers until he shows Jen yeah. um, that he's done the other stuff. Okay. Um, it's been seconded. It's been seconded. That's there was some discussion. Uh, question: Is there any other? Are there any other questions? I think we need a proposal. Favor. Aye. 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 Um, and now we can close. I move we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, you considering it. Madam Chair, yes. uh, I told the finance director I'd try to fit her in. Yes, let's do that now. Eight o'clock. Yes, uh, so she can get it. the home. advertised time. You don't want to burn her out already? <laughs> so. <laughs> I would have done it <laughs> earlier if I had <laughs> seen it. Oh, I have a 12 hour idea. Good evening. Good evening. So I have the ban that needs to be signed by all of you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, special Baptism business. By Baptism by fire, yes. Um, so it's the three million eight oh nine uh three million eight hundred and nine thousand one twenty five and it's at two percent and it includes um renewal of uh communication span fire truck and land acquisition and new um, authorization you did in April for the 220 additional communications DPW truck wood chipper and the building rehab so that's what combines the total amount yeah, which building we have $48,000 um, 157,500 no that's how they do it is building repair. it's not the DPW I think it it was 42919, oh. Article 15. Okay, so it's the, <laughs> I don't have the warning in front of me. DPW septic is one, the correct? The DPW septic, and there was one other thing in there, but... The, Are we doing no? the septic? Yeah. Yes, yeah. in the spring well, we have. It was Article 15 yeah. of your April Okay, Friday. well, it was a couple of items. Okay, a couple together. So that's what we have here. So I have the... I have... Which of selectmen have to sign? Who has a blues? Is there the motion that the, the magic word that the board has to say? To yeah. um, there's the vote after for all the things um, that the clerk has to certify that you need to vote. And if you want to vote as stated, who is the clerk? No. Okay. So oh, yeah. if you want to do that first, that. that you voted to. Okay. You can either read each one or you can vote it as stated. Of it, however, and am I doing this to as do a motion? Um, yes, I believe that you know we move to vote. Um, I don't think I've done this before. I let's see, so it's, it's, it's four copies. I am, so I'm if you'd have to, if you, clerk, right, right. Selectman, you're um, certifying okay. that you of the town of Carlisle, Massachusetts, certified that at a meeting of the board held November 12, 2019, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified, and at which a quorum was present. The yeah. votes, okay. as stated, were unanimously passed, all of which appear upon the official record of the board in my custody. All right. Yeah, so Article 15 um, was... Uh, 392,000 total, right? But not everything got passed. There's the hot water mixing valves, uh, oh, the that's why I underground fuel. The yeah, there's the fuel tank <laughs> right? oh. um, for the generator. There's the salt shed, which didn't pass. Yeah. Right. There was the trailer for the office accessibility brake needs. That's 120,000. <coughs> New septic was 50. And then there was contingency in there for 15%. So, right. okay. so that's why the number comes out the way it does. All right. So, you know what? Um, why doesn't somebody move these voted things here uh, and, and read them out? No, I don't think they I have just to said be read. Yeah, I would just as say, stated, um, said that as, as stated. 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 Correct. Sign the following. Um, but then we have to we have to vote on the motion, right? Yes, yeah, somebody okay. will move to approve the sale of. No, three million eight hundred nine thousand one hundred twenty-five at two percent general obligation bonds anticipation notes of the town dated November twenty-first, twenty nineteen, payable November twentieth, twenty nineteen to Piper Jaffrey and Company at par and accrued interest plus a premium of twenty-five thousand seven hundred eleven dollars and sixty cents. 
That's the motion. Right. Did you just make that? I motion? just made that motion. Okay. Alan just made that motion. <laughs> I will second it. Okay, Luke seconded it. So the um, date of it and the payment of it is both 2019. No, it should be 2020. It's a one year. Okay. No, nope. it's due on 11 20 2020. It's a one year thing. It'll probably go permanent. Oh, so that's a typo. Yes. Yep. So instead oh, of 2019, it should yeah. say 2020, 2020 yep. right? Yep. Okay. Bond council, then. Yeah. Yes, due date 2020. Yeah, 20 <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was odd. I'll let, Margaret, I'll let <laughs> Margaret know. So this, there, there's I cross a, that a out. Well, we're one paying one, one and we're doing a new, so we're doing yeah. the payoff. I don't know if it has, second. has that. Yeah. Okay. We had a as second. Amended. There already been second vote, uh, as, as amended. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Then somebody has to make the second motion. Uh, further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated October 29th, 2019, mm -hmm. and a final official statement dated November 5th, 2019, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, being hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Okay, here again, actually, Kim, is that, uh, should that have been November 5th, 2020? Connection with market, the preparation is dated October. Final, final official statement. statement. No, the official oh, statement is is um, I think dated November 5th. November. Okay, so that's okay. That's official okay. statement, because that's, right. that's a current official statement that you'll have here to sign along. All right. With it. Um, is there a second to that motion? Second. second. And discussion. All those in favor. Aye. 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 And we have third. to read the next yeah, go one. ahead. Okay. Um, further voted that the town treasurer and the board of selectmen, or I move that the town treasurer and the board of selectmen be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver a significant events disclosure undertaking in compliance with SEC Rule 15C2-12 in such form as may be approved by bond council to the town which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the notes for the benefit of the holders of the notes from time to time. Second. I have a question. You know what you just read? Not a clue. <laughs> Not a clue. Good, let's all vote on it. <laughs> no, it's just thinking, great, I'm going to sign it. Is it you're, you're keeping you give me authorization to do all this for you and sign it. And okay. Put yourself okay. back into debt. Yes, thank you. Um, all those... That was moved and seconded. seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll get one, two more. I move that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post-issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such form as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient, or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the notes and to comply with the relevant securities laws. Damn, I understood. We got to do yeah, 8306G. <laughs> That's all motion. prepared and to sign. And I need a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And last but not least. I move that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, and the Town Treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect provisions of the foregoing votes. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Bless you. Bless you. There we go. I don't think I've ever authorized bonds before. This is the first time I've been through this process. Have you? Well, they have to be done in uh, fours. <laughs> So this one four. is for the. Yep. Just so you know, if the town doesn't pay, pay, you have to. Yeah, yeah I'm on the. I'm. <laughs> my name is on <laughs> this one. Yeah. Yeah. The only name on that one. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's what? Oh, okay. Uh, there was no. It, once every March, uh, we do our official statement if there was any significant disclosures of any events. Um, is this still having to do happen. with the bond? <sighs> Is so this, this is all to do with the bond. You have to sign your official statements. You have to sign your tax certification. That's the bond note, and then these are all the statements that go along with it. And this is saying that there haven't been any any significant uh, events that would events impact that would the impact. Our last audit. Correct. Originally, we were going out, I think, for over four million. So um, 
that might have affected it a little bit more of having to go out and do a whole another official statement rather than the one that you updated. So you do an official statement in March every year, and then if you do borrowing in between that time, a lot of times you'll have to update your official statement because things have changed. Yeah. If it's a smaller amount, you don't really. There were no significant changes, but they weren't sure if you had to do another one because originally I think the note would have been $4 million if everything they were going to pull in at the police station. I think Dan had gone out, so that would have made a difference. So this is just kind of... Um, Stating that there was nothing really significant. So what we're signing here is just saying that our, our town finances are still in the same Correct. state state that they were prior to. Okay. As of this official statement, and here's your official statement. I have to get the town clerk. Sorry, everything has to be in fours. There's four in every, there should be four, everything should be in your four copies for everything, yeah. I, you're signing once, yes. I'm sorry, this is saying what? That's your official statement. The price you're going to need that first. So this one is only you oh, signing. Yeah. No, that's you. No, this is me. That as well. Oh, I am. Yep. Five of us. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry because I haven't had a chance to read this. What What are we saying? Here? Yeah, those are nice. That's your official statement. Right. The one you have in front of you. So that's significant events. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> It brings in all. It shows um, what your what your uh, undesignated fund balances are. It basically is your statement of your. Um, you know, the banks will want it to look at it to see, show our condition. So you can show like growth. There's, there's a whole list of questions when you do your official statement, and that's what that one. Is. That's the actual official statement. We do it every March. We'll do another one in March. Basically, the status of the town. That's how they do your bond reading. Kind of a All that. Kind of a presentation. Mm -hmm. That's really confused. I'm not seeing like what, what page has like our finances on it. I see the the bonds that we're borrowing yeah. and what we're borrowing for. Stop doing that, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> we will get a full. I've seen your um, earphones. Hard copy of the official statement um, coming after the note. I know Margaret said that. Okay. So you want me to sign Hi, over here where it says town I'm clerk, well. Well. No, not well, there? Because well, you're not the town clerk. Oh, town clerk. No, town sorry, clerk. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Certain sorry, documents sorry. have to be, uh, yeah, only sign where there's blue. Yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, couple sorry. that need the actual seal. I'm glad you asked. Yeah, yeah me too. Don't sign where it's orange. That's where the town clerk, there's a couple of documents that actually officially need the town seal on them, which that one is one of them. And this is again about the no uh, information reporting, explanations of rebates, different articles, defining the no tax certification. There's four of these. Only sign where there's blue. I know. I was like, I'm usually on the other. Is it worked and you know, we've got the signature sheet. I'm not authorized to spend any money, but I have a signature sheet. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Just the blue. 
Just the blue. Green's me. Orange is. Now it's dark. I think everybody I mean, rather copies it. <laughs> so I went outside it myself and put go. it back in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, because it's probably the one that they actually care about. Yeah. It's the one that they compare. I feel like my signature is degrading. I know. <laughs> Oops, did I get this? Yeah. Just need a stamp. Yeah, I know it. Okay, so you got all this. Okay, yep. Well, actually, it's good that spending $3 million to take this amount of work. <laughs> it should be difficult. It shouldn't be. It should be it's, yeah. it's supposed to be difficult. Yeah. Right. So I will get you the actual official statement of it. Yeah, this is more of an official statement certification okay. of the note of that. But there is a full official statement that we can look at um, after. Want to when I get it back, yeah, that'd be great since I signed that same. Right. Yeah, there was this official okay. certification that the back page on us says no legal, um, no litigation or financial interest with anyone else, but everything is based off of our original official financial statement of how we're how we how we present ourselves in order to get the borrowing. And I think I have everybody, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have more money to spend. Yay. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I will get Carlisle. these. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jump right in, jumping right in. <laughs> they finally got my signature on everything. That was a big thing. They got second official week. No. Uh, two and a half, because they yeah. October twenty eighth was the meeting for the FinCom. Yeah. For those two days, okay. and then uh, yeah. Yeah. three weeks. But yeah, it's been busy. Thank you. But thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Need to go sit out there for a presentation. Yep. Yeah. In about fourteen thousand. <laughs> 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 no, I, I oh, reviewed it fourteen. Yeah. I'm going to talk. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Are you doing over Wait a second. Maybe you're going to crash on the belly. Okay. Sorry. Right. So we can start? Sorry. So we can start? Yes, please do. Barney has a much better nameplate than all of us. What? <laughs> yeah, how did that happen? So, Luke, do you want to call that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll call the meeting of the. Traffic, traffic and pedestrian. pedestrian traffic and pedestrian safety committee to order at uh, eight oh eight. Thank you. So, um, so I'm the vice chair of that committee, um, and um, we were tasked by you, the selectmen, to manage and implement the approved complete streets. Um, projects that were um, subject to grants and funding at town meeting. And to that end, um, we held a um, info session after the special town meeting in October and subsequently had a meeting at which um, the public was invited to attend through um, a letter to the paper. Um, and the public did attend and we took feedback. And in between those various things, we've been um, consulting with Niche Engineering, who are here tonight to present where we're at. Um, what we're looking for tonight is, because I think we've already been tasked to do what we're doing, 
Um, I don't know that we need a formal vote, but if you wanted to take a vote, you could. Um, the next step after this meeting um, will be a presentation to the Historical Commission on the 20th of this month, um, where we'll be seeking a certificate of appropriateness for certain aspects of, of the project. Um, and at that point, um, without coming back before you, we would instruct Mitch to um, prepare bid documents um, such that this can go through the um, bid process and ideally we could have bids back um, prior to town meeting um, in case, since we don't know for sure what the bids will come in at, um, in case we needed any more funding um, with the goal for the project to actually be um, construction to happen um, starting more or less end of June, beginning of July, once school is out. And with that, um, I'd introduce you to um, John Mikalak and Matthew Soltis of Niche Engineering, who um, have been working with us on this project. All right, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us here this evening. Uh, I'm John Mikalak, project manager with Niche Engineering. And with me this evening is Matt Soltis, the project engineer from Niche Engineering on this project. Um, so as David said, what we want to do is present to you uh, where we are with the public, uh, the preliminary design process, uh, hopefully answer any questions you may have, and then uh, take any comments uh, that you have on the design as we move forward into the final design phase and final bid documents. Um, so the first project uh, that the town received complete streets funding for from Mass DOT was uh, identified as project number two, uh, which is the Route 225 Lowell Street roundabout redesign. Uh, the goals of this project are to improve the pedestrian accessibility, uh, which would include new American with Disabilities Act compliant sidewalks, uh, new ADA compliant wheelchair ramps, and new crosswalks that are, that are more visible and safer for pedestrians to cross uh, in the vicinity of the roundabout. Another component to the project is a, a traffic calming uh, improvements to the roundabout. Um, we propose to do this by reconfiguring the existing roundabout and the approach roadways uh, to meet current modern uh, roundabout design standards, uh, which will uh, create slower traffic through the intersection and also improve safety. Um, we're also proposing to reconstruct the median islands uh, to help channelize and slow the traffic as it goes through there. Uh, I do want to note that we're not creating any impediments, we're not changing the capacity of the roundabout, so we're not creating any traffic congestion problems, we're just trying to get the traffic to function more orderly, uh, slower, people yielding to uh, the vehicles in the roundabout the way that they're supposed to and the way that the roundabout is supposed to work. Uh, the third element that we're looking at are, is landscaping and site features. Um, we are proposing to retain all the historic features within the roundabout. Uh, also, we've been uh, asked to retain all of the landscaping within the center of that roundabout. Um, but there may be some opportunities in some green areas around the project uh, where we'll be adding some green space and we could look into landscaping if that's desired. So to go over the, uh, the properties of a new modern roundabout, um, we're designing this based on uh, the Federal Highways Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Uh, these safety improvements will include new signage, directing vehicles how to operate the roundabout, uh, new striping, which will help to channelize the traffic around and through the roundabout, uh, new crosswalks. We're proposing a continental style crosswalks. We'll show you a picture of that uh, later on, but that's supposed to be more visible to vehicles and provide additional safety to people crossing in the crosswalks. As I mentioned, there's a traffic calming component to this uh, by modifying some of the geometry of the approach roadways into the roundabout, uh, as well as creating safer pedestrian crossings, and the islands can create pedestrian refuge areas, uh, so that in, which helps shorten the crosswalks, which also increases the safety of the pedestrians as they're crossing the roadway. Uh, these will all work to reduce driver confusion so that they'll know how to operate the roundabout. It increases the visibility and the awareness 
of the drivers as well as their awareness of the pedestrians and where they'll be crossing. And as I mentioned, it'll maintain that traffic circulation um, so that it'll happen in a more orderly fashion. So this is what the existing roundabout looks like today. Um, you can see that there's a circle, but there's no real um, channelization. Um, vehicles that travel eastbound from Westbridge Street um, really don't have anything causing them to have to slow down or stop if they're gonna travel east onto Bedford Road. Uh, similarly, any tra uh, vehicles traveling south on Lowell Street, uh, there's, there's nothing slowing them down as they take a right onto Westbridge Street. Um, which we've seen out there that vehicles don't tend to yield or slow to any traffic that's in the roundabout today. Uh, as you can see by some of the photos of the area today, um, on the Westford Street approach, you can see that the current sidewalk uh, doesn't have uh, an ADA compliant ramp and the sidewalk is very narrow in this area. Um, and then you can see those approach roadways from Westford Street and from Lowell Street where you can't even tell that you're entering a roundabout and you, it's just a straight shot so people can drive right through. So these are the plans we, we, that we developed the preliminary design phase to show the various improvements that we're proposing. We've also got some on the boards here if you wanted to take a closer look uh, after we're done with our presentation. Um, as you can see, we're, we're creating uh, approaches through traffic uh, pavement markings, and by re redefining the median islands, which we call splitter islands, um, we're also able to produce uh, some additional green space. You can see by channelizing the traffic, um, bumping out the curb a little bit, we're creating another a green uh, buffer between the curb and the sidewalks. Um, you can see in black the uh, new sidewalks we're proposing, uh, continuing from Westford Street to Lowell Street, uh, also from Lowell Street along the north side of Bedford Road, and then connecting from the library driveway uh, across through the roundabout down to Westford Street. Um, these are the uh, continental style crosswalks, which are, are vertical bars, um, which are lined up parallel to the roadway. Uh, they're, they're very visible um, to traffic. Uh, the crosswalks themselves actually are shorter uh, as you're crossing the roadways you're only crossing traffic that's approaching from one direction before you hit the splitter island, which is the refuge area. So you have to look in one direction and you cross one lane of traffic. And when you're in the median, then you look to the, the right and then you can cross the other uh, path of travel. So this creates shorter. One on For two is or three. Goes through the splitter island, correct. And the one on Bedford Road, there is a splitter island, but we, weren't, we didn't extend the nose of that splitter island because then it would have prohibited turns into the library. But you still do get the benefit of that splitter island being to the, to the left of that crosswalk. Can I ask you a question? Why don't you just prohibit, there's the rotary. If people want to get in the library, they can go around the rotary and turn right into the library. Why not prohibit it? We, we, we did discuss that. So the, these are options that we can still further discuss. I mean, like, as I said, these are preliminary plans. We've met with the committee a few times. We've gone through several options, and that was one of the things that was, was brought up, whether or not we should allow vehicles to take that left turn into the library, which, which currently um, we are. And by doing that, we're moving the crosswalk from the right side of the library driveway closer to the roundabout. So moving that crosswalk closer to the roundabout um, puts it closer to where cars are expected to be traveling slower. As cars enter the roundabout and as they exit the roundabout, they haven't started accelerating uh, as much as if they are once they are getting onto the, the straight roadway section. So that's one reason why we would propose to move those crossings closer, closer to the roundabout because cars are expected to be driving slower. Uh, we did also propose a crosswalk across the library driveway because we realized that uh, the children walking to school will come up on the right side of the library driveway. And now we're providing them with a crosswalk, a visible crosswalk so that they can cross over uh, to the sidewalk. And we're actually providing a wider ramp there. We're providing an eight foot wide sidewalk and a ramp uh, to create a space where children can gather as they're waiting to cross the road. So the crossing guard can wait until the children have gathered in that location and then assist the children crossing at that crosswalk to, to cross across Bedford Road. So that was the, the logic behind moving the crosswalk 
to the left, and now we don't have that con conflict of left turning vehicles uh, with that crosswalk. So, so we didn't extend the splitter island beyond the library to answer that question. Uh, and again, on Lowell Street, we've also provided those uh, shorter crossings as well. And then another component um, of the safety improvements is uh, the signage. And it does look like a lot of signs. Right now, what we're proposing are yield signs, which will be required at each of the approaches. Um, we were asked to put a supplemental yield sign. So we'll actually have two yield signs on Westford Street uh, traveling eastbound. One would be in the center um, with that circular roundabout sign that shows that you're entering a roundabout. Uh, the other uh, three would be at the approaches on the right side of the approaches as you enter the roundabout, letting vehicles know that they need to yield to traffic within the roundabout. Uh, the other signs that we're showing, and these are the fluorescent yellow signs that stand out more than the, the, uh, the older yellow signs, are for the pedestrian crossings. And one of the things we were asked to do was to keep the advanced warning signs. So you've got a sign that's approximately 100 feet in advance of each of these crosswalks, uh, letting vehicles know that there is a pedestrian crossing ahead. And then at, the, at each crossing, uh, we were asked to put one on each side of the road, uh, which also has the arrow that points down at the crosswalk. And we were also <laughs> asked to put the signs on the fronts and on the backs, so that as people approaching from either direction, they'll see the pedestrian crossing signs on either side of the crosswalk. Is it 10 feet in advance or 100? 100 feet, sorry. That's the advance warning signs. Mm -hmm. They let the cars know that they're coming up on a crosswalk. And it's sometimes we shifted it based on the driver locations. Well, we're not thinking about um, only one sign that indicates a rotary coming in from Westford to the rotary and, and not putting them on the other streets. So we had proposed uh, three signs, but what we did is since those signs are actually optional, they're not required, um, as you can see on the right, there are some granite markers that already indicate that there's a rotary. And we were asked to maintain those for the historic nature of the, of the roundabout. So we're leaving those and we didn't think that it, it, us and the committee didn't think it was necessary to add additional supplemental rotary signs because you've already got one, even though it's not you know, a yellow sign, but it's, it's the historic rotary sign that's that exists today. So that was the reasoning why we didn't propose one in each of the approaches. And we will be maintaining, you know, the, the granite historic markers. Um, and we're not proposing to do anything to the landscaping at this time within the roundabout. So we're going to maintain everything that's within the roundabout. Like a oh, correct. Yep. And then another component of the traffic calming is so we're allowing for a 15 foot wide travel lane around the roundabout. And then what, what we typically see is a, uh, an apron or a truck apron, uh, which in this case, we've been asked to make this out of cobblestone, which match, matches the historic nature of this area. Um, in other areas, you may have seen that it's a, a stamped brick concrete. And so that's for if any larger trucks enter the roundabout, a part of the truck will drive up on that apron so they won't drive up over the curb. But vehicles don't drive on that because it's, it's bumpier and it's, it's obviously not part of the travel way. So passenger vehicles and buses will be using uh, the, the travel lane and then larger trucks that would have to enter and utilize the roundabout uh, would drive up on the roundabout and on that truck apron. Um, on the edges, um, to save on some of the costs, we're showing that is just painted channelization. Um, you know, it was an option considered to use the cobblestone on those edges also, but, but I think the price was uh, getting a little bit too exorbitant for what the, the town is going to be receiving from MassDOT. So, so we had considered that, but um, right now we're showing paint on the edges and just the cobble around, around the, the island. And we're not changing the diameter of that center island. That center island is still staying 50-foot um, diameter, but we are adding the cobblestones around, a strip of cobble around that. So that would be taking the place of existing pavement. It wouldn't be taking away from any of the existing landscaping today. I'm sorry, I think I, where is the paint? Um, so the white, the white diagonal paint on the edges. Is that one? Yeah. Okay. 
Yep, so the white lines are the, the paint, painted lines. The yellow painted lines uh, designate you know, that there's two-way traffic as you're approaching. So those are the paint marks. Yes? Yeah, we're both crossing down. OK. So I know where we're coming from. <laughs> uh, so on that crosswalk, can we cause a checkered road to provide you relief? Uh, we see several issues with this. Uh, one is that we can't see your kids coming down the path. I don't know if you, I assume you've been out there. You see the path coming down the from the library? Uh, and, and on Tuesdays, at the very least, and on Fridays, that's when the situation really is, you know, uh, there are a lot of kids uh, coming at once. You can have, well, I've had as many as 60 kids come in a five minute period. And believe me, that's a lot of kids coming down. Uh, we're concerned that we can't see them coming, other than you're going to have them stake. The crosswalk at the, at the green area there. Uh, that's going to create a problem for a crossing guard. It, uh, it doesn't allow us to anticipate the kids coming, and they kids are very anxious to get over the ferns. Can we get there first before it all fills up? And, and they don't take direction that well unless you can make sure that they stop, the car stops. We have now no control over the crosswalk going over the driveway. The library driveway. The library driveway. So, you know, I don't care out there. Kids really don't pay attention. And kids are either on their phones or talking to their friends or they're running or they're just you know, walking. We get all kinds of motion uh, on the busy days. So, from our point of view, we really object to the stuff to the uh, that crosswalk to be moved. Also, two other things. Can we get closer to the rotary uh, when um, <coughs> traffic is starting to get a little heavier there on quarter of three, ten of three, and we stop traffic? Now it's going to back up more into the rotary, causing the rotary to slow down. Uh, I think we're causing issues uh, with that too. Uh, as it is, after three cars, maybe four cars, off and it starts to back up the road because you can't go around it because you're there. Yeah. Well, we had, um, there are three crossing guard tenants in the various arrears, and we had hoped that in addition to looking at the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, the regulations that work in communities, and I, you know, I commend the decision to slow down the traffic in the rotary. It won't affect the cars traveling from east to west, but it definitely will slow down the cars traveling from west to east because they're going to be forced to slow down and channel their way and calm their speed through the rotary. But there's a subjective piece to this, and that is we are out there and we have a nice vantage point right now where we stand at the entrance of the library drive, we can see the kids and anticipate the numbers of kids and the timing of the kids as they come down the library path and across the street when they leave the back of Ferns because they enter and leave through the back door. For me, and I was out there today, and believe it or not, in this letter, there were a fair number of kids. I realized how much I value being able watch them come down the path, watch them come out the back door of Ferns. I then can look at the traffic, anticipate when they're going to arrive at the crosswalk, and make it a safe move for me to get out in the street and stop the cars and then wave the kids across. So it's a subjective piece, but a very important one to the three of us who are out there every afternoon for an hour. <coughs> with anywhere from five kids to 50 kids. And I have to say, I'm, I feel that my, my comments about that and my concerns about losing that sight visibility of my kids 
um, has no value, wasn't a factor in making whatever, I, I don't think, you know, the recommendation is to move the library crosswalk. Um, I mean, I, I don't think there's any, there's any value placed. Well, and I'm how curious. I feel when I'm out there, and I'm responsible for every, we all, for every child who crosses that street, that's our responsibility, in addition to our own safety. So I, it's great we're slowing down traffic. The design, um, I commend you for that. But I still implore people, please, we're the ones out there. Can't you at least take us into consideration? Leave, leave the crosswalk where it is across from the library. It eliminates that crosswalk across the entrance, which we do see as problematic. The kids are still going to angle across, even though so, there will be training, there will be talks at the school, things in the newspaper. So I feel like we need an eye on the new crosswalk and eye on the crosswalk crossing the library entrance while we watch for cars turning into the library. Um, it's gonna be what it's gonna be, but I really feel my feelings have no merit. And also, that's a also, way to also do. taking, putting out the sign saying, no left turn coming out of that thing, that'd be terrific, no matter which way the crosswalk is going. So I guess the owner's um, issue. Most cars take yeah, a right. Few cars, very few turn to the left. left. Most cars turn right. And most give up, and then go right. right. And, and then go around <laughs> yeah, the road. Yeah, they wait for a while, then right. they give up. And then you have a truck issue yeah. that does delivery. Um, the back of Burns, if the forty footer, it's not too much of a problem. But if they start coming, I've seen a forty footer come in there and have trouble going either left or right. The uh, the granite post at at the uh, at the old Steiner Refuge there, I seen the truck come that close to it. And also that the sign, the movable sign on the crosswalk as it presently is, that totally flattened. So it just happens to stay in it. So that's another issue. Yeah, definitely you know, safety, but it's, it's really definitely just a point of view. The kids, it's being able to see those kids that's as they're part. approaching the crosswalk. And that is being taken away. So, so we did discuss that at length with the committee and mm -hmm. We went over the, the pros and cons. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to show this is for the, this is, this is rec the recommended crosswalk location if there wasn't a crossing guard out there though, because it would be at a safer location for people crossing. So, um, I mean, we can certainly continue this discussion with the committee and see what, what the thoughts are, but um, there's, I, there's pros and cons with, with I each I know, other. and perhaps if we're not a, a school child crosswalk, if it were a regular crosswalk like the others in the center of town, then you know, there'd be no objection to placing a post for the rotary. But this is unique in that there are children who cross at this one, even though it is the recommended location, and then they could consider the rotary. Yeah, I suggest we go through the rest of the yeah. Yeah. presentation. I, yeah, okay. I took a long time. Can I ask one okay. short question? Um, in looking at the Crosswalk Island on Lowell Street, I see that you've made it so it's two little mini crosswalks and there's this landing. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you can't do that on Bedford Road because large trucks coming out of Burns wouldn't be able to clear it. Is that correct? If they were turning right? Because in my mind, why couldn't you just make a larger island where Bedford Road is and have it be mm. island crosswalk island so that you're doing it in the same manner as you did on Lowell Street, which would allow the crossing guard to stand on that tip of the island and see everything. No way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 is it the left turn out of the library? library. It wouldn't be able to make the left. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it would turn in the other direction. Okay, yeah, I mean, we. We we can look more at the the different we truck would, patterns yeah, that yeah, people have mentioned and. Maybe we can get in. There's no left turn. Oh, that's the end. Oh, that's the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's the end. Yeah. No, I've done an island refuge. Yeah, but coming from the road. I don't think that a truck could turn left out of Burns and get to the road if there was an island. The geometry, the 
geometry doesn't work in terms of what the rotary needs to do in terms of slowing the traffic. If you flat, the only way to do that is to flatten out the continuation out of the rotary going towards Bedford Road, and that defeats the purpose of making the cars do that turn in and out of the rotary. So that's the most important thing for driving that is that vehicular movement from Bedford Road to Lowell Street. Um, and you can see we have the white patching area there for the truck, which means that you should do that. You're just going to flatten that movement a little bit and keep it safe. Well, and well, I'm talking about Westwood Road to Bedford Road. Oh, yeah, that's too as well. So that's yeah. part of the geometrics that kind of dictate that. And the whole thing is, is driven by geometries that's been shown to work to do the traffic volume that's the key feature of this. Yep. Anyway, can we move through the other parts? And ones? Sure. So I explained what the proposed signs were. Uh, another question that was raised to us was the heights of the signs. Um, the uh, standard sign height uh, determined by MUTCD is, is seven feet to the bottom of the sign. So I know that some concerns have been raised about lower signs, people not being able to see past them when they're driving, uh, people not being able to walk past them. So signs will be installed uh, to the standard height if they're gonna, if they're in a location that would block sight lines or uh, you know, near the sidewalk where people will be walking under them. And as I mentioned, the, uh, the medians will be, uh, the granite marker posts are gonna be retained. Great. So, One hundred foot approach signs. Is right. it on just one side of the street or both sides of the street? At the roundabout, it's just on one side of the street. So the the vehicular movement that's approaching it, it'll be on your right, hundred feet before the crosswalk, and it'll be the pedestrian sign with the little a head plaque underneath it. The reason it is that um, is because there isn't a space opposite these where it can go. So the only place we can do it is the one that we talked about there. But the, one of them would be in the middle of the parking lot. Center Park, um, one of them would be, um, um, there, there, are, there isn't a place to put them. Great, thank you. So the other project that was awarded from MassDOT to complete streets funding is project number four, um, which is installing a new sidewalk along the north side of Bedford Road where there currently is not a sidewalk. Um, two main goals of this project were to improve pedestrian accessibility and improve the traffic at the East Street Bedford Road intersection. Um, as part of the pedestrian accessibility, we're proposing a new five foot ADA compliant sidewalk, um, closing the, the, what we call a gap in the network of the sidewalk, where there's an existing sidewalk over at Ferns Road from the library crossing, and it doesn't connect to the existing crosswalk coming down East Street. So we're proposing to connect those and provide connectivity so if someone comes down East Street, they can go to Ferns or vice versa. Um, another one of the goals is to relocate the existing crosswalks on the east side of the East Street intersection to the west side of the intersection, um, and also install new ADA compliant wheelchair ramps at all pedestrian crossings. Um, as for the traffic patterns at the East Street Bedford Road intersection, um, we're proposing um, as part of the base, but I'll get into this a little bit later, is new pavement markings to kind of create a, a more formalized T90 degree approach for the cars rather than that angle now where people are kinking their necks to try to look back on the traffic going westbound on Bedford Road. And then also to define two separate turn lanes because under the existing condition, cars kind of stack up. So we want to more formalize what's happening out there now in a more safety manner. Um, as discussed, this is kind of the existing conditions out there. Um, there's no sidewalk on the north side, as we mentioned. There's the existing crosswalk at the library um, and the existing two crosswalks at East Street, one that crosses Bedford Road and one that crosses East Street. Um, there's no ADA compliant ramps for those two crosswalks. Um, nor a sidewalk connecting those two on the, the east corner of East Street and Bedford Road. It's just a little dirt path right now. Um, there's no clear edge defined pavement on the north side either. It's kind of just a, a gravel depression kind of ending with the, the white striped shoulder line. Um, and at the East Street, you can see it's very wide open and kind of a, uh, a skew coming in for more favoring vehicle going uh, westbound on Bedford Road. So those are the proposed um, conditions um, that tie into the roundabout project that John was talking about. So we are proposing a new five foot HMA sidewalk with a um, six foot grass median between the edge of the roadway and the sidewalk and then grass behind the sidewalk um, as it enters the abutting properties. Um, we're proposing a new granite curb to be installed. Right now there's no existing curb along that north side. 
um, new driveway apron, so the paving to the back of the sidewalk, so that way um, the sidewalk can be continuous along the driveway for the crosses. Um, as you see, as we work our way to the east, the grass strip um, actually disappears a little bit. And part of that is there's an existing retaining wall at that property right there. And we propose to put the sidewalk up against the curb so that way we could retain that wall and have a little bit of two feet grass behind there to make any grade adjustments that we need to to tie into the existing grades. Um, as part of this, you can see we removed the two crosswalks at the east side of the eastern intersection and put a new crosswalk on the west side um, that has better sight lines and new ADA compliant wheelchair ramps, shorter crossing distances. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the driveway in future slides. We can see the new alignment where we teed up the intersection with two light, um, two traffic lanes, one for a left turn, one for a right turn. And the stop bars are actually offset a little bit. As you can see, the left turn in lane is about five feet further back than the other one. And that's for vehicular movements taking a left onto East Street from Bedford Road. Um, one of the main reasons for the T also and the curbing along it um, is a better location of the stop sign. Um, right now as this view, it's kind of hard to see the stop sign with this formalized T vehicles will slow down, come to a stop and can see the stop sign more clearly. Is there a concern with the, with the offsets that traffic turning left are going to have their uh, visibility blocked for people coming east on uh, the road? We check sight lines. They should be um, okay. Um, they're actually, the stop bar is actually pretty close to where it is today. Um, the stop bar for the right turn is actually much further to the south than it is today. So, so, so the, are they going to be able to see traffic coming from down, going east down that Bedford Road? Yes. Truck? Pardon? Is it the truck? Yes, they should be able to see it. Well, see through the truck. Yeah, how do they, no. how are they do that? Oh, the truck's in the left lane? Yeah, truck's in the right lane. Truck's, truck's in the right lane. Truck's in the left lane. They won't be able to see right. They they see. Yeah, they, they'll have to wait for the truck to, to take the right. Um, so the sight line will be blocked. Yeah, I mean, for that vehicular movement a little bit, yes. And also, can it ease up from that point? Correct. Yeah, it, there's only five feet between the two. So it, it's not a, a, a car's length or anything. Um, proposed signage, um, similar to the roundabout, we were proposing the fluorescent yellow um, with um, the crosswalk ahead signs and the, the crosswalk signs. Um, for the Bedford Road eastbound approach, um, for discussion with the committee, we're actually adding the crosswalk ahead signs on both sides of the roadway. So um, as you're coming into the center along Route 225, it kind of provides awareness that you're coming to the center and, and slowing down for that crosswalk on the opposite side of the intersection. Um, we have one on the eastbound side as well of the crosswalk. Um, and you can see the stop line, the stop proposed stop sign location too with that, that tee up intersection. Um, there is some signs at the corner of East Street that we are gonna, um, we are proposing to retain, such as the, I think there's a, a granite marker there and some street signs as well. So as for the, the East Street intersection, so as part of this in discussion with the committee, we're gonna um, advertise it two ways, where this is actually the third project in the mass lot. So project two is the roundabout. Project three was actually the teeing of the East Street intersection and project four was the Bedford Road crosswalk. So this wasn't actually granted for funding from mass dot, but when we looked at the striping as one of the goals um, in discussion with the committee, actually installing the curbing and designing it is very minimal as you already looked at the striping. Um, so we're gonna do it as what's called a bid out alternative. So go see what the contractor bids it as, and if it, if it sees desirable to go, we may pursue it forward. If not, we have the striping. Um, some of the pros and cons is with the striping only, the, the crosswalk actually shifts about 20 feet to the west um, because we can't install it through that kind of striped area on the left, whereas in here you can put it closer to the intersection, which is more favorable. Um, another concern with the striping is over time, it, it fades um, you know, over a few winters, um, whereas the curb is much more defined. Um, the other positive is the driveway. We're able to formalize it more coming out on Bedford Road rather than now they have a very long driveway. Um, when we have just the striping option, we, we could narrow it up, but it's still gonna, they'd have to drive through that gore area, whereas here they can um, use the, take a left off Bedford Road and um, a little bit more defined for them and they can still access all their, I think they have a few garage doors there is the way we designed it and they'd retain their grass area. So to be clear about this, the Complete Streets didn't fund this intersection, but they did fund the sidewalk. And um, DPW, Gary Davis, is going to be repaving this whole area anyway. 
And so we initially looked at what's on the left here, which is if Gary's going to repave it, then it's just a matter of painting and we're not <coughs> doing something that wasn't funded. The problem, as Matt pointed out, is that you're putting a certain amount of money into a sidewalk that's not where you want the sidewalk um, because it's not an ideal place um, and it, it doesn't solve any of the other problems. And the, even if you do the striping like that, to try to create the traffic to do what it's going to be forced to do in the one on the right, there's nowhere to put a stop sign. So the stop sign would still be over, yeah. all the way over where the, um, that new crosswalk is. And essentially, you know, we could probably assume that traffic will continue to just do that straight pull to there and it creates a, a, a real dangerous situation. So again, even though it wasn't funded through the complete streets, as Matt said, we put it as a bid alternative, and hopefully it won't be significantly different from what the one on the left is, because it, it didn't seem to us to make sense to spend money on a sidewalk that's not really where we want it, um, and to create this. Um, I mean, the other alternative would be to just do the sidewalk and not do anything at all there, and leave it as it is, which we didn't think was a, a good solution, so that's why we went with what their recommendation, what Mitch's recommendation was. what I was talking about in terms of trying to get the bids back before town meeting and have a placeholder on the warrant um, and um, the, the feeling that if more money is needed we'd be able to make the case to town meeting that it doesn't make sense to do what was approved on the left because it leaves a not a good situation. But again we have no idea what the bids will come in. Um, the next few slides are just some, some example photos of some of the materials that we're talking about that are a little um, new to the area. The first one is the, the flush cobblestone treatment that John mentioned for the truck apron. So this is an example of uh, flush cobblestone treatment. This is for a median island, but um, this is what we'd be looking to install 10 feet around the center island um, for the truck apron. And it's basically granite cobble set in a mortar that's set on a concrete base. Um, this is a, an example of another roundabout. This shows actually a stamped concrete truck apron, which we're not looking at, but it shows a granite curb and a typical landscape median. Um, we're proposing to retain the landscaping out there, but just kind of want to provide some um, guidance of kind of what, what's typically um, looked at for like a landscape median with granite curb and the application out there. Um, this is an example of the continental style crosswalk, and you can also see the fluorescent yellow um, pedestrian sign. Um, it should be noted that this crosswalk style is kind of the MassDOT standard for high visibility locations um, that they use on all their state projects. Um, it's, is yes. there any evidence showing that that crosswalk signal sign is better or worse than a very similar one, but where the actual post is illuminated as well? Have you seen those where it's like the whole bar of the mm -hmm. pole is a strip of yellow? That's something we can definitely look at. I've, I've seen those before. I can't speak right now in terms of, you know, what, what's proven for federal government, but it's definitely something we can look at. Have you ever seen those in areas where somebody's not expecting that sign to be with different, um, you know, reflective poles, there's the flashing lights that you can have around the sign. These are all other things that can accentuate that. I think with the number of crossings in the sign, I think it's gonna be, you know, very clear where the crossings are. But I mean, that's like Matt said, that's certainly something that can be around. It just seems like a not very expensive way to make it more visible. Yeah, I guess my only concern is if you did it on all of them, that you could stop drawing attention to the important ones, I guess, and then you don't see a couple of them. Again, it's, it's public off the land. Um, these are some examples of the, the sidewalk treatment and the wheelchair ramps. On the left, you can, it's actually a fluorescent yellow sign as well. Um, you can see the cement concrete um, wheelchair ramp with, we're looking to use the brick red um, detectable warning panels. Um, that's a granite curb with the hot mix asphalt sidewalk um, as well. And on the right, just a little bit more close up of the hot mix asphalt um, adjoining to the cement concrete wheelchair ramp with the granite curb that we'd be looking to um, more or less mimic out there. Okay, so the the idea with the hot mix is that it isn't for it to look quite as asphalty as this, but to look more like the um, what's out there now in terms of the chip seal finish. So it's 
sort of a grayer finish. You're not, you're not saying that we would use chip steel. Not chip steel. It's it's called hot mix asphalt, but it it's smooth. Well, it's it's not as smooth as pure asphalt, but not as rough as the chip steel was to start. And to so still have that rural appearance. And so um, there's a point at which uh, the the sidewalk going up low will meet the pathway, the regular sort of stone pathway, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, we would be meeting into existing. Yeah, sidewalks, and so is it, so it's just gonna just end up and then the stone path will begin, will continue from there. So I think where it starts right now is yeah, what? Right. In front of Belize House or in front of the police yeah. department? Police department? Yeah. My house. Yeah, your yeah. house, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. is, is that the thinking? It'll just, yeah. Yeah, at the just have we'll, a we'll transition to the existing width and height of the existing sidewalks yeah. where we need to. Yeah. Um, so we won't go in with just five feet and have a ninety degree angle. We'll, but, we'll but angle this, it nicely. This actually stops the, the new sidewalk. The work area is much. It's not all the way up to here. Yeah, so. but does it stop in front of the police department? Um, <coughs> yeah, it doesn't even make it. Yeah. That's not even the cemetery. In front of the cemetery. For Oh, it's just like the work okay. area is only up to here. And the crosswalk that now is there, sort of in front of the fire uh, police department, is yeah, that, that going to continue? That just stays to right stay there. And, as and is? one of the things that came up at the info session is, you know, yes, these sidewalks are going to be better, but what about this sidewalk and one yeah. by the school? And yeah. So there's a whole laundry list of other ones that yeah. need to be Improved. brought up to safer standards. Yeah. And we're going to make complete street. Great, and that's all we had as part of our presentation. So, if there's any additional questions or comments, we're here to answer any questions or concerns. So, I had one question. Sure. Uh, on the, um, I guess it's the East Street part where the new intersection is going to be. So why not just leave that the way it is today rather than repaint it? And I know it's not the safest thing on the planet. Right? But why we're not if we're currently not funded for it, why not just well, leave it? Well, because we're funded for the sidewalk. Right. So does that move it over at all? The sidewalk we would be putting the sidewalk where we don't think the sidewalk should be. No, no, but is is the sidewalk gonna be on the where there's currently grass or is the sidewalk basically pulling it out into the road so you have to do something? No, it's right off the edge of the road with no, you know, with a curve, but nothing, nothing else. And so what's on the left there, so it's this straight shot, um, it doesn't deal with the down it, it basically could be anywhere along that whole long right. sidewalk area out of the home there. Um, it doesn't deal with the problems of the cars coming down. So yes, theoretically, you just leave it we, well, we don't, we, we, Leave the road as it well. It's still going to be repaved, so he's going to have to paint it with something. Right. And he could paint it exactly the way it is now, um, but without the um, presumably without the two existing crosswalks, which are very dangerous, and then just having the one crosswalk on the left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and yes, that theoretically could be what happens. But the answer to why not do that is you're putting money into a sidewalk that's not where you want it to be, it's not protected for the full length of that, and you're not dealing with the traffic bogging down East Street, not even stopping at that side, and just putting a crosswalk there that was an idea was not where you want it to be. So if, if, if we could just like get a little bit of structure in here. So this is, this is, uh, on Comcast and so if you're asking questions from the audience they can't hear it um, so I think it'd be good if you have questions you know when you're ready to take questions if if you come up to a microphone so that people can hear it um, and then the response can also be from somebody on a microphone I've just gotten a lot of feedback lately that people can't hear what we're saying um, so I actually have some questions if I may yeah absolutely um, so my first question, 
And now that I've said that, I'm going to make you have to get up, uh, Jay Fisher. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're really narrowing what's going on in the uh, traffic circle and the rotary, and we're putting in curbs. Is there any concern about the impact on the number of bicyclists that we have in that rotary, particularly on a Saturday or a Sunday? If they, you know, can't get out of the way, there's there's curbing. Yeah, I think yeah, you have to come up here or come pull a chair up to this. So we, we talk about that. We talked about this, and I think the the concern is um, that to do less, to do anything wider, would allow a greater speed, right? So that the engineering of this is, is pretty precise, and it is going to cause people to have to yield more. And you know, the laws are what they are about the cyclists. The cyclists have have the lane on you know un unless um you know the car's there first I, I think it's going to you know make us um uh, uh cognizant of that and we'll have to see mm -hmm. but i you know we, we did spend some time talking about that beating it beating it around um but i think that calming the the vehicle speeds in that rotary is just so critical it's our it's our biggest traffic complaint in town, and from an engineering standpoint, it's designed wrong. You know, they're telling us this is the way to do it, and I have to agree that it does seem to be the best way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think one of the big you know I think I think the biggest problems between the the bicycles and the cars is that the car drivers don't understand what the bicycle laws are. What they're entitled to. And right. Yeah, and the bike owns the lane, um, and uh, you know so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we address that, but um, you know, I've even seen in the mosquito complaints about bicycles doing things they have a right to do. I mean, it is their right. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, thought thought about those curbs and the bikes and can they get out of the way? What about painting? The, you know, there's those um, bikes on the lane on the painted stencils yeah, on the. There's, there's no there's no room for it basically. But I mean, that's the problem is that there's nowhere. I mean, the standard rotary doesn't include a bike lane. Uh, no, but you're not saying a separate lane. You, you, it would no, be no. Some, the bike some, would take some the whole lane. Some towns have a sign in the roadway say the bike owns the lane. Oh, right. that's right. It's yeah. painted oh, yes. yeah. on yeah. the yeah. asphalt. It's, oh, I see. I'm it's, sorry. it's a stencil, and it, it yeah, makes it very clear. move back to the existing condition for the rotary? Right. There are signs that say yeah. the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Big in Lincoln. Lincoln has a lot of them. Yeah. So the, I mean, there isn't a curb but there isn't really a safe place for the bicycles to go either because you're essentially pulling up onto the sidewalk or onto grass or onto whatever, and you've got cars zooming along. And so, oh, so the only curb is the one at the end of East Street. No, no, there's all no, I'm saying the existing condition. Is oh, what yes, I'm saying, yes, is the trade off for the cyclists in not having it's just a whole lot more width, a whole lot more width, but. You don't know, you know, what's safe within that width because the cars are going so fast, and you know, and so basically pulling in and out of the rotary as a cyclist, um, when everybody's yielding, should be safer. Um, and with the existing condition, there isn't really a safe place for them to pull off. It's just they're pulling off onto sidewalk or grass or whatever. That you know, it's it's not like. The fact that there isn't curb doesn't mean there's a safe place for cyclists to be now. Yeah, but it's much more abrupt if you hit curb than if you yeah. go. Oh yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. But the, and but it, the the solution really isn't to be pulling off the road to save your life. It's to calm traffic and have it go through here and have cyclists will be going through as part of the traffic. Mm -hmm. they okay. Can, yeah, they, they can go just... through at 15 miles an hour. And when there's a large number of cyclists, they have to be doing that anyway. There's not room for a large group of cyclists to come through the center and stay narrowly on the edge, and, uh -huh. and they tend not to. Right. Anyway, but okay, yeah. Um, and another question I have: if you could go forward one, uh, I guess another. Um, so currently, there's what I believe. Maybe I've been doing it illegally, <laughs> um, but I believe that there's a a legal, legitimate parking place for the ATM. That goes um, away in in the front, and yeah. we're losing that. I, is it okay um, for people using the AP, ATM to be using that parking lot? Do they have? Is there a right to use the parking lot there? That um, 
is the real estate company? It's a bank too. So I stopped over there talking to them about the facility. No, that's that's not real. They're not really supposed to be parking spaces there in the first place. Uh huh. Looking back, so yeah, I was just I'm wondering: so is there is there an alternative? Alternative. I mean, yeah. do do right. bank customers have the right to use that parking lot for the? I, I don't know that. I don't know that answer. I would find it odd that they yeah. occupy half the build or quarter of the building and don't uh -huh. have to park cars there. Because the years I've been here, everybody certainly does pull in there. A lot of people mm -hmm. do certainly pull in there, uh, especially on weekend days. But I guess I don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. if that's yeah. if that's the answer. Yeah, it's it's hard to if you get into the parking lot. It's hard to get back out. It's very hard to turn around. That's why it's really um, much easier to just park in the front, go in for your second, and get back out. Uh, and can I piggyback on mm -hmm. this question too? Um, there's a lot of cars that come, and then they they turn they left view. here into the school, school, and then there's a lot of cars that come and do mm -hmm. viewies. And I'm wondering, and then there's of course we've talked about this this left from you don't can't see it on here, but the the left on down to Westford Street. And we have this rotary here that could be used for redirecting, you know, the the direction of traffic. And I'm wondering if it wouldn't help, if, for instance, you said no left turn here so that people are using the rotary and going right. And if we said no left turn here, if people want to go left, they go up School Street, you know, at the other, the next, they have to come around the, mm. and go up, uh, maybe it's Church Street, where, maybe I'm getting the wrong that name of the, that one way, that other street that goes up to the school to try to keep this clearer because it, this gets piled up. Then you get people trying to pass on the right, which is illegal. And, it, you know, well, they won't be able to do it here because the traffic lane is, well, is narrow. Well, but. then that'll create backups. So it would be, well, Any, um, what I'm asking is, yes. did you consider doing some other things like saying, just don't do it, don't turn left here, right. so the, go around further. So basically the idea here is to build the geometry here and those kinds of changes Would come can, can happen temporarily. later if, if, you know, if they are, are needed in order to solve issues. But the, the core geometry of this um, doesn't preclude doing those kinds of things. Um, well, and I am concerned about the ATM because I don't see how you can get to it You'd have to go, probably go past, go up, come back, come down, because mm. there's no place to, to turn around. Yeah. Well, right now there. people do a U-turn well, here. That's... And is that still going to be possible and allowed? Well, it's not allowed now. It's over yeah. double yeah. yellow yeah. lines. Yeah. You're not supposed to turn. No. turn you're not yeah. supposed yeah. to cross. You're supposed to do it lines. now. Uh -huh. What you do is you live over in the part of town where I do, where you're coming in from then the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but you don't do it at eight o'clock because it'll take you forever and a day to get up Westford Street. So, uh, well, again, the, <coughs> the parking spaces aren't being eliminated. I mean, first of all, they're as Chief Fisher said, they're not parking spaces, although people do park there. Um, but they're not being eliminated because we want to eliminate the parking spaces. They're being eliminated because it's the only way, given all the existing mm -hmm. property bounds and where things are to create the geometry we need to calm traffic. Yeah, and, I mean, that, and that's and that's clear. And it's just yeah. right now they, they look like they're legitimate parking spaces. Well, because it looked like there's yeah. been cut into yeah. the property that is not in the right of way, in fact. Yeah, you're well off the road. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not, road, I'm, so I'm not questioning that the, would, the presumption is that, that people have been parking before. there. Oh, yeah. So you, I have, have a couple other exactly things. exactly where that property yeah, line is. Yeah, we know is. where all the property lines yeah, okay. are. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So a, a couple of other things. Um, one is looking at looking at the end of uh, Lowell uh, East Street. Um, I mean, it would be my very strong preference not to do the lines um, and to do this full thing. And you know, yeah. even even if it means we have to anticipate going, just because it is nice that the the sidewalk is much much shorter. But I also think that painted lines so quickly become just roadway. Um, and in yeah. particular, in the winter time, if all the snow isn't scraped off of them, you know, the, you know, either it's going to be where snow ends up, which is going to create a problem with sight lines, um, or it's going to be snow plowed, not bare, and people aren't going to really realize that or the next one. it that they're not supposed to be able to yeah. to yeah. drive there. One, I think yeah. so. I think if we if we really want to solve the problem, those lines are just not going to do it. Yeah. Um, 
And then finally, kind of on the library crosswalk, my concern about moving it um, is that just people being people, um, you know, it's kind of like you see sidewalks, you know, in office parks or, you know, wherever, where yeah. the sidewalk kind of meanders along. And then there's the place where people actually walk. Um, you know, people don't follow the sidewalks. I just, I'm just concerned that the, the kids are going to come out and then just dart across the road because they don't want to walk up and go over and cross the, cross the road. Well, how many here's, feet is this from here to here? It's how not there. It's the other side of the driveway. No, it's, no, it's just the other side of the, it's the other right. side. No, no, they come down from school. No, here. but it's, it's, to, it, it's over here. Right. right, right now what they do. Right, yeah. But I'm yeah. asking if, if kids came here and you're saying they wouldn't bother to come over here and go across the crosswalk, how much is this distance? How oh. long? Oh, it's, I mean, it, well, 25 feet. Yeah. 25 feet. The, yeah. the other thing to note about this is that the, the area to cross is much less at the new location because of the traffic calming island and that that's going to be a significant um, improvement in terms of, you know, the concerns from the um, Reuben and, um, and the other crossing guards is that having that be a shorter space um, and with the cars going slower, that's going to be significantly safer. Um, the, it's not a typical jaywalking situation because it's really quite a big distance. So it's not, um, I don't think it will be as um, enticing to take that angle because it's, 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 it's a pretty big distance that you'd have to be crossing um, to do that. Um, and you also would note that you actually do see if, if a guard was standing on the, that right green, yeah, right there, you can see to the back of ferns perfectly well. Um, and and you, the crossing guard is not supposed to go out into the crosswalk until the kids are at the, at the crosswalk. Um, so this, the idea of anticipating the kids doesn't, shouldn't affect the proper function of, of, of what's being done there. And again, what we're looking at here is what the traffic engineers has told us and what, you know, not just what Niche has told us, but what the state standards are for the safest place to have crosswalks relative to a rotary is to move them closer. Um, and, you know, we're discounting things, which are the, you know, right now the kids cross more or less into the exit of ferns where cars can be pulling out. Um, so this eliminates, you know, it, it eliminates that. And, and yes, there is the crossing of the, the library crosswalk, but everything that they've told us is, is that this is the safest place to do it. And I think, again, the short, the, the fact that it's, I don't know what percentage, but it's, you know, 60% or two thirds the, the length of the cross of the road should make, it should be a significant difference. I'm wondering if we need two crosswalk, uh, two crossing guards, um, because what they're worried about is they don't, they can't see the kids coming this way. Mm -hmm. They're not worried about this way. They're worried about this way and that they will pile out and if they're standing here, they can't catch them before they're in the well, street. Well, they don't, around. I mean, they don't catch them there either. I mean, but I don't know, Chief Fisher. Okay, let's throw a couple things in. It's the first I think is, is really important is to acknowledge the important works these folks do yeah, absolutely. and their perspective. However, I, I politely disagree for two reasons. Number one is if the engineers are telling us that this is the safest, slowest, best place to put it, yet we choose to leave it there, recognizing that speeds are going to be increased. I wasn't in saying both leave directions. it there. I was saying put another second so, crossing guard in. Yeah, that's all I, I'm just the, the other side of this is I have my personal belief is the culture is going to change such that they're going to hug the driveway on the left side, even though there are parking spots there going down the from the library, get onto that green space and cross. I have and I've worked this. I, I don't even know how many times I've probably have seen most of you when I've worked this when they're not there. And my biggest heartburn is cars coming out of ferns. And at least this puts them on the proper side of going up the building. Um, I actually think that that crosswalk is safer for kids crossing to go to ferns because at least they're already where they're supposed to be um, and not crossing that driveway mm. where we all stand, where Ruben and I and everybody stand, which is on that 
corner right by the, uh, the library entrance. Because there you actually have three things you have to consider. You have to consider the crosswalk, you have to consider vehicles turning into the library, and you have to consider the kids crossing that driveway when they're actually out of your control and out of your reach other than yelling at them. Um, I, I personally think, number one, that the engineers have told us this is the safer, slower way to do it. But the second thing is, pragmatically, I think this is, I, I think this is better. Um, I, I completely respect what these folks say. and It's incredibly important to me and to this town that we have them there and that they do this important job. But I still think this is going to be a better, better culturally and better safety-wise. And we will cover this at the back-to-school meeting, you, you know, with, with the kids when I get a chance to talk to them about this. And, um, you know, my, my str anyway, I don't want to belabor okay. this, but I, I know this has been a, a linchpin. It's been a, a, a hot topic. But I, I think it's, it's the best plan. The other thing I would say about this is that this has to work when there aren't crossing guards. I mean, there are kids going to school in the morning um, and well, people coming and going. Well, I'm adults, then I'm not so. Well, but there are kids that walk. You know, there's parents here who have said that they, you know, they want their kids to be able to walk to school. And they come down on the west side of Lowell Street and cross that first crosswalk and then come around and cross the other crosswalk. Um, and having the crosswalk in the safest place that the science tells us is important to do for the, all of the times when there aren't people there to assist people crossing and, and the science says to put it here. Um, one more question and then we have to move on to our next agenda item, I think. Yes. Come on up to the, yeah, come on up to the mic, please. So I just wanted to ask, um, so um, right now today, if you're coming from the library and you go across, you get the crosswalk uh, guard and he takes you or she takes you across and you kind of go into Fern's parking lot or you can go on the um, uh, soft uh, walkway around. With the new rotary there, will the bicyclists who are coming uphill and get really, you know, like they're um, slower, are they locked into the rotary or do they have the option to kind of go up on the sidewalk just in case they don't want to go into the rotary? I, I guess it's, if that makes sense. So do you have options to go kind of like through Fern's parking lot, which is what I always do, or um, if you're a cyclist, do you have to go kind of across? If you don't want to go into the Fern's parking lot, do you have to go on the sidewalk or are you locked into the rotary with the new design? Uh, well, you're talking about. Your bike, you can go on I was going to say you could dismount. Okay, so that's okay. So you can, but I don't dismount know people just because right now it's a soft shoulder. So people who are like a little slower, like er, pedaling and trying to not block traffic, they can kind of like ease into Fern's um, yard and p park their bike there. But with this, it's like you know this is a serious rotary. So if you're like in the rotary and you're kind of going around, you're like. Ugh. You know, well, this, well, yeah, they can also go in the painted, painted area, right? Yeah. This is yeah. painted. So they can kind of like veer off into the so shoulder. Veer, yeah. yeah, so they hug the curb. They would yeah. actually be in that painted area. And I, how wide is that? That It's pretty wide. Yeah, yeah, it yeah it looks wide. pretty wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah it because there is this is probably a about here. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, that's about yeah. seven feet because this is 15, you said, right? Yeah. You said yeah. this is 15, so this is it's about half of it. So I'd say that's about seven feet. It's 10. It's, uh, truck 18 is 10 feet. Yeah, the cobblestone. Yeah. yeah. At its widest point, that might so, be an area. Yeah. But protocols okay. would be that they get Which off their bike. Wider than they the most the bike lanes. Rotary. Yeah. If they don't want to go into the rotary, they go off bike yeah. into the sidewalk. Right. And the same thing for runners. It's probably better that we kind of run across and kind of go into ferns or go around, right? Th that the runners should be yeah, on the sidewalks, sidewalks and sidewalk. use this cross. Yeah, cross. they don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I think one of the things one of the things that you'll see if you look at this compared to the old one is that you know the lanes get squeezed. So people are yeah. right now you get the bikes that come out of ferns and you, everybody's like, what's going on? Right. The bikes don't know how to really enter. The people right. coming in don't know what to do. Right. You're not going to have that, right? Because everybody's going to be forced into the rotary. Yeah. So when you have rotary. right. So <laughs> but when you have bikes in the rotary, there won't be that opportunity to really pass like people try to do now. Um, you know, so I think it's it's going to force people to. Respect bikers in a lane, you know. Um, I hope. But 
we'll see. That is the logic with roundabout design is that bicyclists can take a single lane roundabout in the travel lane because roundabouts, typical vehicles are going much slower than normal. So they're almost matching a bicycle speed. That's what yeah. I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Bicycle can easily go 15 miles <laughs> Exactly. Before. That's the thought process. Just, just to complete the picture, one thing I wanted to mention is that niche, because I think before I was involved in this, um, Stamps and McNary was engaged to design the two Bedford Road crosswalks further down towards yeah. Kimball's. Um, so that's not part of this presentation, but it's part of what was funded. Um, and so I'm not sure how we coordinate the bid process on that, whether Stamsky and Niche can provide the things <coughs> and you put them together. But just to be clear that part of this process is also the two crosswalks over at Stamsky. And we haven't, as a committee, met with Stamsky yet so we'll have to do that to coordinate how that happens but just want to make sure that anybody who's listening at home or whatever is aware that those two crosswalks being redone you know presumably with the same continental style and the same signage um is part, part of, of this it. as well yeah and again what we're looking for from you is just sort of a general Yes, continue, and we'll go to HISCOM on the 20th, um, and they're going to, we're just applying for a certificate of appropriateness for the continental style crosswalks, for the cobblestones within the um, truck apron, for all the other traffic calming devices and islands to be green, either grass or simple um, plantings, um, for the brick red landings, and for the um, hot mix asphalt to be as close as possible to the chip seal and appearance mm -hmm. for the sidewalks. Has there been any thought given to the 3D type of crosswalk? It, it, it's, it's painted, but it looks three-dimensional. Those are weird. Yeah. They're, they're very effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I know that they just did one, I don't know, a test base, was that in Medford? Yeah. Um, so we, I haven't heard whether that's been yeah, accepted. So the or, federal government actually okay. issued a memo saying that they do not approve of 3D crosswalks because mm. they are extremely confusing yeah. and they almost provide more confusion and someone's like, whoa, what's this in the roadway? And they think it's more of an obstruction than a... Than oh, a yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't wouldn't put them on a main travel lane, but something yeah. you where, yeah. you, where you want traffic really to slow down near stop. You did talk about raised crosswalks yeah, no, or raised... I understand. But the yeah. costs... Uh, cost and cost plowing and all that kind of stuff. And, and also drain it, a lot of drainage yeah. issues yeah. here. Um, just, just, an, just a thought, yeah. Thank you very much. I just wanted their hand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, someone who hasn't oh. spoken yet. Hi. Yeah, I, I Can you come on up? Thank yeah. You. <laughs> this actually has nothing to do with the center. I appreciate your, your oh. and everything, all your hard work. I have a question about the possibility of a future endeavor for pedestrian safety on South Street. And I'm wondering, how can I make that happen? Like, is it possible to, like, somehow get funding for a crosswalk there? Because it's so, from Heald Road to Concord, it's so windy and narrow. Like, I almost had a head-on collision, like, last week. Because a woman was walking her dog. I came around the corner, and she took up my whole lane. So I had to swerve, and there was a car coming head-on. Like, if we didn't slam our brakes on and pull over, like, I, I wouldn't even be here today. And this is, like, a constant concern. Every time I get on that road going that way, I get frightened, especially in the winter. And my children are, like, trapped and healed road because... We can't go, they can't walk to school. They cannot go down either South Street or Acton because they're both extremely dangerous and narrow. So how do I make this happen? I know this is a proposed we thing become, for the future, but- yeah, the, the, new ahead, streets yeah. committee. The, the new streets we have a committee. Uh, path, oh, okay. Pathways uh, What's it called? <laughs> Traffic and pedestrian safety. Traffic and pedestrian safety. And it ends up yeah. being on the docket <laughs> And tra traffic, 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 traffic and pedestrian, pedestrian safety. Oh, wonderful. I was, was going to say, you have to become the new De Deb Belanger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do it. She used to do the pathway she used to do work. All the, she's the one that's responsible. Yeah, for, did, did a lot I of her organizing credit for all of that. that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much okay. for your time. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yep. you. So, yeah. Thank you for yes. all so your hard work, work yes. on this. Okay, so and all the... All the guff you're taking from everybody about. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> okay. We have the Carlisle Energy Task Force. Oh, number six. All, all one of you? Is that it? Yep. Yeah. You want me at the podium or? No. Have a seat. No, just have a seat, seat if you'd like. We have a couple.
couple of things to talk about. So, uh, I'm here to talk about car chargers, but let me give you two brief updates. One is the solar canopies are moving forward. They seem to be fully on track. Um, passed the planning board a few weeks ago. Um, we are waiting to hear back um, as to which block number we fall into. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I, I don't believe we have that information yet, right, Tim? We do not. So, what do we think? We we're somewhere between three and four. Okay. Still hoping for three, I think. Okay. Still hoping for three. All right. Well. Um, so yeah, and then uh, the second thing is, uh, you guys have this on your uh, on your website, and Tim put it up there. Actually, I think Jen did it, but. Um, the whole thing that we did a uh, year and change ago about switching over to green energy, that has actually saved the taxpayers of Carlisle something like $250,000. Um, it's a very small amount on each person's bill, but in aggregate it adds up to a huge amount because the, the cost of the electricity was actually lower than whatever source's basic rate was. Right. So and we, did, and we did get the reports today, thank yeah, you. Yeah, they were, yep. <laughs> So well, I was actually, I actually asked for those reports because when I read this, I wanted to know were the cars that were going to be charging on these chargers going to be using green energy or brown energy. Ah, and yes. that's And then I said, you know, where are we with the aggregation? And I hadn't seen a report for a while, so that's kind of all went out. Yep. Um, and well thank done. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. so all goodness. Now, this is, uh, so this one. The reason I'm here tonight is almost everything that we do, like I mentioned this in the public hearing or the public input last time, but almost everything the, the Energy Task Force does is like makes money or saves money. So the car charges are unique in that there's money coming in and going out. And so we need you guys' support in order to pull this off. So we have uh, a great opportunity here, I think. Um, so we have a Green Communities grant that gives us uh, the full cost of a car charger. So we don't have to pay anything to actually purchase it or install it. Um, so we have that money in the bank. Um, we have uh, an agreement from, uh, or we have uh, Eversource runs an EV Make Ready program that actually puts in the infrastructure. So they will run new wires from a telephone pole all the way over to the charger, put in the pad, put in all the electric meter, the whole bit. They'll do all that at no cost to the town. Um, my estimate is that's somewhere around in the neighborhood of around $100,000 worth of you know, electrical infrastructure that they're going to be putting in. Um, and so we have this opportunity, I guess, to put a car charger at the school. Um, and uh, there's a few things that we need to have to make this happen. Um, actually, the greatest risk to this project right now is timelines. The Green Communities Grant uh, expires May 31st of 2020. Um, however, even before that, in order to apply for grants, in about January 31 plus or minus, it's not quite clear when they when they actually ask for the grants, we need to have spent the money. Um, and so <laughs> from the previous year, so it has to be completely spent before we can apply oh, for new. Oh, I see, okay, right? All right. Yeah, so, um, so anyways, uh, so the, the biggest risk right now is timeline on this, and so we need to be expediting all this. So the current state of it is the school committee's fully on board. They voted unanimously last time to continue the project, to continue to move forward with the project. Um, the, uh, so the contractor that Eversource hired uh, has met with me at the school to go over the location that the school wants it at. Everything's good there. And they put together plans and they sent it to Eversource and we have not heard back from Eversource yet. And so we're currently waiting to hear back from Eversource as to whether they approve those plans. Then once we have that, we can get a timeline and see how that lines up with the school schedule to figure out how that's gonna impact stuff going on in the school. And of course, figure out whether or not that's going to actually impact the installation of the solar canopies because we don't want to go so far in that we're getting in the way of those guys. But I guess the the main driving fact and the reason I started working on this was actually because of the solar canopies, right? We're going to be repaving that parking lot. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that even though it's not a huge deal right now that we need, you know, we don't need right a solar charger or a car charger there. I figure in like five, ten years, we're going to want one there. And I really don't want to have to come to you guys and say, let's redig up the parking lot that we just paved. So I'd rather put the infrastructure in now. And if that means we have to have a car charger sitting there, even though it's not necessarily getting used a ton of the time, it's there and available for when we want it five years from now. Whereas if we wait and don't do anything now, then we're ripping up the parking lot. We don't have any of these incentives. And so we're spending tons of money 
to do something that we could have gotten now at no cost to the town. So there's a few things that I need you guys to think about. Um, and let me just run through them. I sent them in. I hope you got the packet on this. But mm -hmm. uh, so there's uh, the EV Make Ready program is going to require the town to sign a legal contract that we're going to maintain the car charger there for at least five years. Um, there's a whole bunch more information in there, but the big thing is got to have the car charger up and running for five years. Um, the second is on the financials. Like I said, there's money coming in from this thing and money going out. And there is a fixed cost in terms of Eversource charges $18 a month for an electric meter. And the unit itself, we use about a dollar a month in electricity. And so we have a $19 a month charge that we, you know, we have to you know, make up somehow. Now, I believe that based on my calculations of all the, you know, how much we could charge for the electricity we're giving to the cars, et cetera, you can actually make it up and then some, right? But it's close, right? Especially when it's not going to necessarily be actively used in the first few years. But as we get more and more electric cars, it'll get more and more use, and then it'll be easier to make up that, that differential. So the financials right now, based on the cost of electricity, it's somewhere between the town you know, paying an extra $19 a month to making $250 a month. So if there was... Use which one? Uh, if we, you know, we, it'd be wonderful if we all drove Tesla's long range and parked them there overnight, then yes, we'd make the, the 250, but I don't think that's realistic. Um, so that's the, the third thing is they're going to have to come and ask you guys for a trenching permit because they're going to have to go underneath from the pole, uh, underneath Church Street from the pole on the other side of Church Street. Um, interestingly, because of the way the EV Make Ready program is run, like if you need police details to like reroute traffic or whatever, that's all covered under Great. the costs that, that Eversource is going to be paying. So uh, it's a pretty good deal there. Um, and then uh, the last thing, and I think the most important thing that Nathan and I had discussed in the past is we're, since there's money coming in and out of this thing, I'd like some way to manage it, right? And the, to me, the best thing is probably to come up with some sort of revolving fund. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a revolving fund that's just for the car chargers. We could do something that was larger than that, um, and that would be fine, right? But I think we do need to have some way to have, you know, the money that comes from this thing goes here, the money that it uses goes out, right? So we need some way to manage that. Some level of also. Yeah. So, oh, and I should mention that we, since we need to go for, for town meeting for that, between now and town meeting, the Energy Task Force has voted to use their rather meager budget to cover the $19 a month that will be <laughs> required at a minimum, right? We could make more than that based on what comes back, but but we we know whose budget it could come from between now and then. It's going to go on the school budget. What's that? What about the school budget? Uh, the school budget would rather not do it. Um, Surprise. Figures. Yeah. So, <laughs> but but so this is an interesting thing for you guys to consider globally, right? Is, it's going to be used by school personnel yeah, primarily. It's, well, it's, used, used, it's open to the public, but yeah. so an interesting so thing here. I mean, must be. Yeah, it's mostly going to be the teachers. It's got to be the teachers yeah. because so. you need to spend four or five hours there to get your car charged up. Actually, no. The thing's well, so powerful. You can charge most cars in about an hour. So that's one. So that was one of my really? questions. You're putting in a high speed. They're putting in a high speed charger. Yeah, it's it's called a level two charger, and so it runs 7.2 kilowatts. Okay, rather uh, than level hours one, hour. which is the yeah. slower ones. Yeah. yeah. So level two is a higher speed. Right. Ones. So it's not the Tesla supercharger. You're not going to get yeah. your Tesla charged in yeah. 20 minutes, but um, but most hybrids will charge in about an hour. You know, most plug-in hybrids will charge yeah. from empty to full in about an hour. So they go max right. of 60. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. They go. So, the, so a, a long-range like, Tesla would take 10 hours to charge there. But yeah. Um, okay. So um, I have a couple of other questions. Yep. Um, so I understand it's one charging station, but it's going to have two space for two co two cars could be charging Correct. at the same time. Yep. Um, will having the underground wiring put in allow for more yeah, yeah. than allow for another station down the yes. road um in or fact so ride. there's two ways that they can figure it yeah. one is for a future of five car five uh five cars worth of charging for five the stations other, no five, cars. five cars i don't know why cars. five cars but then the other way is for 10 cars so how can so what be i five i have it's no an idea it's an odd number <laughs> okay so it's, it's anyway. based on the amount of current that comes to the wires i guess okay um so uh, so when Tim and I filled out the application, we explicitly asked for up to 10 yeah. in the future. 
because, and we put it in a spot in the parking lot where you can have 10 parking spaces. So we could continue to add more chargers okay. without having to add more infrastructure. Okay. The only thing that they might have to do is come in and run, you know, thicker wires in the future. But even that, not necessary. Yeah, but the conduit and everything. The conduit's all there. So It'll all be there. Yeah. Or there won't be new trenching, yeah, exactly. Right. But, yeah. Because yeah, um, deal. Yeah. I strongly support this. I think it makes absolute sense. And but I think there are more people in town that actually have either hybrids or fully electric cars that, like, I could imagine parking there, you know, when I go into Chorus on Monday nights, you yep. know, and where if I'm going to be over here, it's not a big deal to park over there, um, right and walk over. Anyway, so I think it's a really great idea. Um, this is a minor thing, but... Uh, have you thought about how it would get sort of managed once it's up and running? Like I'm thinking, you know, somebody plugs in their car and they've got a full charge, but they're still sitting there. So somebody else can't pull in and you're not going to have a teacher run out, you know, in the middle of class right. and move their car since right. it's fully we charged. We did think about that. So, yeah. uh, so ChargePoint has this all arranged. You can Basically, we could have the teachers register, right? And then they would actually get a, you could have them have a different charge, right? They could run on different rules for it. Um, so once they're authorized for this particular station in a particular way, you could do literally anything, right? Um, so we did think about, um, you know, do we want people there parked long term? So the town of Chelmsford has a bunch of these, and they have basically a system set up that once you've been there for two hours, then anything more than that, you get charged extra. Right. Ah. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's what kind of plugged in at all. Bucks, uh, What's that? What if you're not plugged in at all? Uh, right. So actually, the school um, wants to make sure that the parking space can be used for school purposes. So if it needs, it's needed for school purposes, then it ah. should still be there, even though somebody's not necessarily using the charger. So personally, I don't have a problem with that. I right. mean that if you a non EV charge non EV could be sitting there. Not EV car could sit there to park. Yeah. So I don't think people would do that naturally. I think human nature would say, I don't drive one of those. Why would yeah. I park there? But right. if it's the last spot in lately? the school. What's that? Been a nail wife lately? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But no, it's a little different. I think we're not. Or the close Corvette to that, that parks still. in the green cars the only at my work. Uh, yeah. Yes. I'm. I'm sure that that okay. kind of stuff does happen. But I think the vast yeah. majority of people are not like that. Yeah. Um, so. So I, I just have a question because it was a couple of years ago the Energy Task Force came for the charging station here. That yes, really happened. it was is actually it, is, recently. Yeah, or was it? Was it last recent? year. Okay, yeah. so a year ago, right? Yeah. So that hasn't happened, but are, is that, it's not the same It's fund. the it's same the money from the green communities. And but are so, we still going to get this one? No. no. So okay, this so one can't be done. So so it's uh, this has been a long process to get to this point. We tried the library. There were various issues with getting it put in at the library. We tried to get it put in at Ferns. We couldn't get it across. We couldn't get the electricity across the street at Ferns. We tried for the town hall. We couldn't get past the wetlands to get it put on the other side over there because oh, it has to come from the, the big electrical unit over here. And so there's and no... Come. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so in order... I mean, we, we thought about it, but in order to get past the wetlands, we would have had to have, you know, wetlands boundaries redrawn, and the Energy Task Force doesn't have that kind of budget. So, you know... <laughs> Replication areas. Those, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Put them where that, those 15-minute slots are? What's that? Couldn't we, in, in the town hall, couldn't we have then put it where those 15 minute slots, there's, oh, and Two eliminate slots. those? Oh. And eliminate mm -hmm. those? You could. Um, I mean, they could put fit, that 15 minute So that, that wasn't proposed. This is also still in the historic district, so. Yeah, that's, and also that's, that as complications. more room to add more. It goes school. right under our historic yes. LED lights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but ultimately, so. Ultimately, that, it's boiled, this isn't going to happen, but that. Right, ultimately, yes, it's boiled right. down to if we want to use this green community's money for anything, the only available spot is at the school. And fortunately, the school is fully on board with it. Actually, it's a, so, it's yeah, a good place for it because yeah, it teachers yeah. will buy electric cars. And, yeah, so yeah. part of this is to encourage people to buy electric cars, and I think having it sit there at the school. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to end up being, in, in order to make it financially work, you charge a little less than what people pay for electricity at home because then they're more likely to charge here than at home, yeah. right? And so that's what makes everything work out. That, so. that's, that also yeah, incentivizes buying the electric car, though, yep. because putting that in at home cost me a couple of yes. yeah. K, yeah. Um, 
and you know I can afford it but it for a teacher that might be a disincentive to, yeah because they're worried that they can right they know they can so do but again it right. is a powerful charger and if people are buying hybrids they're going to charge in an hour and the teachers are not going to run out at recess time yeah. and move their cars no, around it. and we don't expect them to send their students out and so mm -hmm. right you know, <laughs> exactly so send so their, that eighth grader out to yeah so i do think it's going to be important for us to figure out the management of the pricing yeah. the yeah. fortunate thing is is that we do have literally the, this the technology is capable of doing whatever we want That's good. so we just have to decide and so between the school committee and the energy task force, the people at town hall, you guys will come up with some set of rules that we feel like using. Yeah. So, okay. so Let, one goal. other quick question. So, so once you got the go ahead and they start the work, how long, what's your estimate of how long it takes to, to do the conduit under the trenching and then it the does actual not seem like it's actually a whole lot of work, but I don't have a time frame from them yet. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still debating, they're still debating whether or not they can get it done before winter really sets in. Ah. Oh. So if we can get all the approvals, you know, set up, then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Snowing yeah, today, right? Te the teens <laughs> tomorrow morning. Um, yeah. So, but they might even be able to do it. The, the big issue is if you're retrenching, right, they've got to be able to fix the roadway. And right. if they yeah. need to tower over the roadway, they've got to be able right. to do that. Otherwise, they don't really care. We know the quality of their paving. Yeah. 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 So, um, okay. so the other possibility is that it ends up basically getting done in the spring, in spring. sometime. Okay, um, makes more sense. So, yeah. That so works in terms of spending the money by the end of January. Yeah, so we've got to get whatever you know. You guys have to sign all the various paperwork. Um, we've got to get so, and and I can't get the school. So I have a meeting with the school tomorrow on this, but the school won't want to sign off on it until they have some idea of what the timeline is, and I can't get that until EverSource approves it. So we've got kind of a little backup. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the, the the biggest issue right now. So okay. yeah, let's do it. All right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but we want to talk about the. Yeah. yeah. So I, I had I had provided a draft uh, mm -hmm. proposal. Did you put yeah. sent for the revolving fund? Is it not because it wasn't in my no. package? Oh, no. So I think I I'll just think have it... to read it then. Okay. Sorry. Um, so the. You know, the, the percentages here, I think, are totally up for discussion. Um, but what might, it's short, so I'll just read it. Um, so um, I propose that we create a revolving fund. Uh, and this is, I had mentioned this two weeks ago. But um, I propose that we create a revolving fund for the purpose of reducing energy consumption and reducing greenhouse emissions. Um, this fund would be managed by the Energy Task Force under the direction and approval of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, for this fund, uh, or funding for this fund, I propose comes from multiple, well, two sources in particular. One would be um, some percentage or all of the income produced by the um, solar array at the school. Um, and the second would be from savings realized after energy task force projects. Um, and so uh, those funds would be based on the projected savings of the project in the first full budget year of the savings. And I'll, I'm going to give you an example. but. Um, and so what we would do is to, just to throw out a percentage, say that after the full budget year where we know what the savings really are, half of the money would come out of the budget entirely, and then half of the money would go into the Energy Task Force uh, revolving fund, um, and it would go in that fund for a period of two years. Um, so it's not ongoing forever. Um, again, these these numbers can be can be changed depending upon what we feel comfortable with. But you know, the idea being, the Energy Task Force has saved us money. We we immediately realize some percentage as savings, so we reduce our operating budget by that amount. The other part goes into a fund, but not in not Perpetuity. forever. Yeah. Um, so it it's for a number of years. I'm suggesting it's two years. We could we could change that, um, and then. Um, uh, then, uh, yeah, after the two years, then everything that was saved comes out of of the the budget. Um, I think that it's important that we make it clear when we are pulling money out of the budget. Obviously, budget's still going to go up, but I, I think we need to purposefully say we're taking the savings out of the budget rather than just roll it into some other thing, um, because then we'll kind of, you know, not really, you know, realize the savings. Um, 
So as a savings example, like in fiscal year one, because we don't know what the year is, um, there is an energy savings project that's undertaken. In fiscal year two, the amount of the actual savings is determined if that previous year was not a full year, right? Um, in fiscal three, in fiscal year three, half the savings is taken from the budget and half of the savings is put in the fund. In fiscal year four, um, half of the savings goes in the fund. And in fiscal year five, 100% of the savings is now out of the budget and um, is realized by the town. Um, so that's what I propose as a way for the energy task force to um, have the funds that they need. Another another source would be the, the, the credit card charges for uh, uh, the, the, the charging station. And obviously there would be an outflow from this for the payments of those um, of the charges we receive on a monthly basis. Um, so that's what I propose. Um, I'm wondering if we ought to, since we haven't seen this. Yeah, I'm not know. expecting us to say yes now. Oh, okay. Just, just to, wanted to, to talk it through it. So okay. That, okay. So, yeah. that, so that I'm, I can re, yeah. so that I can refine it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. You know, I, th I think it's it's up to us, and then you yeah. know, I think we would, you know, it would obviously need to be a warrant article. We'd want to talk to FinCom. It's not their decision, no, but we would want to talk to FinCom. Um, but I think that this is a really good way of encouraging additional savings and additional reduction um, in greenhouse emissions, right? Um, without impacting really, obviously it's impacting our budget because we're not really 100, realizing 100% of the savings, but we're not going to be able to get more savings um, if we don't have the money to be able to, to spend. The you know, so they could, they could spend this money on... Um, uh, you know, like matching a grant, if that's required for something, they could save this, they could spend this money on a grant writer, um, you know, becoming part of some kind of a consortium if they wanted to of, of going after these things. Um, you know, they would talk to us about what they wanted to um, uh, spend it on. You know, we'd have to figure out is it, if it's over mm. a certain amount or something right. like that, so they're not always having to right. ask us. Um, but this is the general idea of how I think we could fund this committee mm -hmm. and uh, make it, you know, um, make it good not only for the town. Uh, well, it's always making it good for the town, right? But it's it's making it easier for our, us on a budget from a budget perspective right. um, and helping we re realize the reduction. You know, we spent right. a ton of money on things. Um, we've gotten a lot of grants but we have not seen our budget go down once because of it, not even symbolically, right, in looking at the budget. Um, we, we've seen no real, realized savings in our budget from these projects, and I'd like us to start seeing that. It's been something I've been talking about for four or five years now. Um, uh, it, it would be good to, to you know, if, if we're saying we're saving money, let's see the savings. So there was one that you could see and that was when we did the street lights because there was a cost for the electricity of the street lights that was at like 10,000 something and yep. it dropped to like 2,000 something. So that yeah. actually showed up in the town meeting budget. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. So it was visible at one point, but that was that, you're right, Nathan. That yes. was the only one that I have ever seen that was actually visible. Yeah. So. Um, and I think that was because I insisted that the number <laughs> drop. <laughs> right, Tim? Um, and um, you know, we, we really should be looking at, like I'm just thinking about the Household Recycling Committee and their revolving fund. I mean, it's not really, a, I don't know if it's exactly the same thing, but it's where the, you know, the uh, sticker, the sticker the fees, fees yeah. go and they can only be spent on things having to do with the transfer station. But now the, you know, the Household Recycling Committee has gotten a couple of smaller grants to get, um, what was it, the, the uh, composting, composting bins mm -hmm. and... Some, anyway, did, did that I, come? Did that did that expense come out of that revolving fund for the sticker fee? No, no. Mm -mm. Right. Okay. Couldn't because no, but they've gotten waste. they've gotten some. Uh, yeah, some it was a grant separate grant though, for, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Gary had. Some. Oh, so it's yeah, it's the recycling committee that controls the funds from the sticker fees. I thought it was no, Gary. No, it's Gary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But, it's, but it's very restricted mm -hmm. in what it can be used for. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. 
Um, Which is another thing we have to bring back to the table to talk about. Yeah, but, yeah, but um, anyway. Um, but what I want to say about the revolving, your revolving account does not look like what I saw in the report from uh, Jonathan Decock. And, and I see, I think there is a need for. I haven't his, seen that one. Uh, just the one it's for the in, car chargers. Just for the car chargers. Oh. I, and yeah. I think. It could be a very simple thing. Would be I, a I'm perfectly need happy to. For a smaller revolving account for specific the car chargers because it does have things going in and out on an ongoing basis. Those car chargers aren't going to go away after two years and they, those charges will still be there and they need to have that revolving account in order to bring in the money that is being paid. So I, I'd like to not mix those two up. What's, but, uh, um, I think. What's the drawback of having them all in so one fund? Well, because. What advantage to having it all in one is uh, we've used our Green Communities grant. If we want to put in more car chargers, the funding is going to have to come from somewhere, right? And so it would be, I think, advantageous for the energy task force to be able to look at that and say here's our pool of money shall we decide to fund one of these now and if so where right so if you keep it in one then that has certain advantages right as opposed to splitting it into effectively two revolving funds one for your energy car chargers or ev car chargers and one for the energy task force in general right and the other thing is if they do get to the point where they're making 250 dollars a month and our expense is nineteen hundred dollars a month, and they can only spend it on the car charger. You know, the the pre payment that that fund's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because we won't be able to spend well, it on the. Okay, well then I think some of it can be siphoned off and put into the other one if we want. And I don't some think of you it can do that with the revolving fund, can you? Without. Not yeah. from one to another. Yeah. If they have different purposes, we can't. But you could take some okay. out of the revolving fund I mean, and give it back it to be, the town. The purpose could be broad to enough to include it all. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah and also too the general fund. Yeah, I mean, because also too, if there's maintenance, right? I mean, if right, yeah. if you I'm, only have five hundred dollars in there, it costs fifteen hundred bucks to do some sort of maintenance thing. You're going to have to pull from yeah, somebody's going to have somebody, to pull somebody right. doesn't so that's unplug why before I'm just they drive thinking off. Thinking yeah. It might <laughs> make some sense <laughs> to have that. Most of them, yeah, yeah. 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 because that is something that's going to need that we don't want to be taking away from them at the at you know suddenly they end up with nothing. Out of it, yeah. Because so it's not maybe, a matter of savings, right? So maybe, maybe, That's maybe I maybe I wasn't uh, completely clear. Um, the The idea isn't that we're taking anything out of the revolving fund after two years. What what the the, 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 the for that energy savings project? Okay. So right. the idea is they're going out and they're saving money us money like crazy because they're getting all these grants and they're getting a percentage of that. So at the end of two years, a particular the streetlight savings goes away from being put in there. But there's other things that have done, like maybe it's the school light. You know, I'm just giving examples mm -hmm. of things that already happened. Or I think uh, you know there's other projects. Fitting the town hall or something. Yeah. Right. Those would go in there. So you know, future all all projects for two years, a percentage. I was saying half but a percentage of the savings would go into the revolving fund. After two years, it would stop. Um, because and if you don't stop it, it eventually, be, it ends yeah. up just being a cost to the town, right? It's an additional cost to the town if you don't stop it eventually. So there would always be additional funds until we ran out of energy savings opportunities. Yeah, um, but what I'm saying is that, the, that those, <laughs> those charges will still be there. And they're still going to be requiring maintenance, and they're going to be making hopefully millions. Yes, yes. <laughs> those are not making savings; they're making income. It's a different, it's a different thing, in my in my mind. Yeah, I I'm fine either way. If you wanted if you wanted to put on two Warren articles on on town meeting, one for just for the EV car chargers, and one for the General Energy Task Force, that would be fine with with me too. I think. I mean. We can bring it up. I have a meeting with the Energy Task Force next week. I just think it's a little and restrictive. What happens, in what circumstances, Tim, can we move the money from a revolving fund to something else? Can you move it to the general fund? No, not unless you, I, I think if, if you were to dissolve the revolving fund, yeah. I think it has to then revert to the general fund. But sort of midstream, I don't think you, you yeah. can move money between 
the yeah. wrong example. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's why there's it's benefit to defining it somewhat more broadly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, it's fine. I just I'm just concerned that um, they're going to have expenses. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to make sure that they will have. And since that those machines are actually making income for themselves, that there's some way of for them to be able to have access to that so that it's not coming out of something else. I think if you made the fund that Nathan proposed general enough, you could pull funds from that to like pay for maintenance on the car charger. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I don't think that would right. be a problem. Yeah. And if the worry is that we don't have enough money for it, we could potentially say, you know, because we, we actually control it, we can just say, okay, you always have to have $1,000 in the fund in case something happens to the the car chargers. Okay, yeah, I so guess you can't go I'm, below a certain I'm also like a bank. Yeah, I don't know. We'll charge you a fee every month. <laughs> for what the car charger has brought in and how much it's cost us, when it gets mixed in all this, um, I think we lose track of what it those car chargers are doing, and mm -hmm. I still feel like they're a different entity than those other projects that are kind of saving money. Um, and so I'd like to have some sort of way to account for how much did they bring in. And how much did you spend out? Well, we'll still you have that document. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 So I mean, you could check. But it. we could. I mean, we could probably set up. I'll ask the energy task force this: if they, if, you know, once this thing is installed, can we provide you a yearly report on exactly the car charger? How much did it bring in? How much did we spend on it? But and isn't we, we the income? We could do something from an accounting perspective. That's what I was going to say. Okay, that, yeah. that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Because yeah. if money's coming in to the town. From those chargers, it's got to be accounted for through our accounting office, right? I mean, yeah. our uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and same thing with okay. So with the electricity going so, out, yeah. okay. So then that would that would be a well. It's like any other we, fee. Then, so a percent. Then whatever our fifty percent of whatever the profit at the end of the year that would be put in, we would do that then that accounting yearly. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how that fits into our revolving account oh, I, because I, I find it to be I, different. I think it would be at the beginning of each year, an amount of money would go in from it, the savings to a project. Okay. Obviously, I think right. you know we're, we're waiting until we really know. Um, right. But obviously, if if we make a mistake, we have to make it right to the department. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I think that we'll we'll know what the savings is. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, so at the beginning of the year, when we do the budgeting at the beginning of the year, we would just say twenty five hundred dollars has come out of the budget, and twenty five hundred dollars is going into this revolving fund, and then and then it's done, right? If they spend it all in July, they don't get more. Okay. And you'll probably be adjusting rates each year as well, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know, depending on the cost of electricity, and and then how you much will, usage you're yeah. getting, yeah. yeah. But I think the car chargers, I don't think you can do the 50% thing and it's only two years. That doesn't. That See, doesn't that's what I'm sense. trying so, to say. Exactly, so that, that's that what makes I'm sense for that's savings not, projects, but not for this. So I'm, I think you'd need to call that out. That's the distinction I've been trying to right. make. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I was proposing so, all of the car charging is, is through this thing. So all the income goes into it and all the expenses come out of it for as long as they're there. And then what about the profits? We don't get to have. To the profits are used by the Energy Task Force to reduce uh, future expenses. Can can you put town funds into a revolving fund? Can we move, say, a thousand dollars from the general fund into? Because then that way you have all those fun, like permitting fees, right? They all come into the general. I think, fund. That, I think that it's supposed to be fees and user charges. I think it's going yeah. to be generated, and that I don't think you can sort of seed a no. Mm -hmm. Okay. A no. Fund. Well, that's kind of what we'd be doing here, though, right? So we can't do mm -hmm. what I'm proposing. In what? In no, I, I was saying, I was saying, just take all the revenue into the general fund and then just put X amount into mm -hmm. it every year. You know, just give them a flat thousand dollars or whatever. Well, right? that's what. That's, that's not what far doing. off of what I'm talking about, though, right? No. I'm saying like if we set, no. save ten thousand or six thousand dollars on traffic lighting or street lighting. Mm -hmm. Mm. That our budget would reduce three thousand, and three thousand for two years would go into this fund. Oh, I, you know why are we talking about revolving fund? Why don't we just call it budget line then? Yeah, just give it a button. Just give them a budget. Because line. then it goes away at the end of the year. So then we just refund it at the. The the money never really goes away. It just doesn't carry over. Yeah. So I mean. 
So you'd have to carry it over each year. Right. So it'd have to be b voted at town meeting every year. Yeah. Yeah. Which we do for other Which things. Which we do right. for other things. Yeah, I don't think this would have an issue passed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's always that resolution we make every year that right. funds that sort of stuff. Well, so. yeah, there's that oddball one, right? Yeah. There's that. Yeah, the continuing appropriation. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. 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 I think you could do it that way. Yeah. It would just be their appropriation. Yeah. Right. But nobody ever seems to spend. Or they do, or they don't. Or well, nobody knows. Why so don't, why, why, don't, uh, <laughs> why don't you and I go talk to the finance director and figure this out? Okay. Yeah. If you want to get it. Yeah. Also, so, is the school committee fine with the uh, whatever income is generated coming, not going into the school budget? Or did that come up are, at all? These things are tied hand in hand. If they want to pay for it, they could have the income. Yeah, yeah. But no, we haven't really discussed it. it okay. they, they mostly didn't want to pay for the install. So. Yeah, no, I think that um, we made it pretty clear when we were talking about this, at least I know I did repeat it at many, many times, that it's not school committee money. You know, this is this is town money. It was a town project. It's on school, school property. committee property, but it's a town project and they're part of the town. So just two thoughts on the whole savings thing. One is the energy task force is concerned about uh, setting up an adversarial relationship with the heads of the departments. So we don't want to make it so we'd like to save, you know, the town money. You guys get nothing, right? Because then I think that would set up the wrong relationship. We want to work positively with all the heads of the departments to make these things happen, not in a way that they say they see the energy task force coming and run screaming, right? We don't want that to be the case, right? That's so what we do. It depends on. <laughs> you guys are fine. <laughs> we don't mind making you scream. Um, so, uh, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is the, the, I think the biggest need from the energy task force is, uh, a person to help us find more grants mm -hmm. and then manage those grants so that they actually get executed effectively. And so, you know, I know there's a desire to not have more personnel and whatnot, but that's really the thing that's currently holding us back is the energy task force is small on volunteers right now and without somebody it's very difficult to manage all this so and this would give them the flexibility to do that right yeah. to hire somebody part-time to yeah. coordinate with concord in some way you know something like that yeah. so those are the two opposite ends of the spectrum right we don't want to piss off the departments but and the other thing that we talked about was um uh maybe you know when things settle down um in the accounting and finance area <laughs> Um, maybe there's a way we could actually create an incentive for savings, right? You know, now people leave, lights are on, you know, doors are left open. Um, maybe there's something we can do to, you know, kind of create a, a friendly competition where if we can account for energy type costs and, you know, do some kind of a, of a challenge and how can we get those costs down? You know, who can, who can reduce it the most? Um, just because these savings projects are great, but they're they're not going to really impact the human behavior part of it, right. of you know things just being left on or open mm -hmm. or right. you know cars running or whatever it is that's in you know that's kind of energy related. Yeah, it's it's difficult to do in a town like this. I mean, you can do it by major cost centers, uh, but town hall, uh, public works, police, fire. Well, the police school. has to be there 24 seven. Town yeah. hall can close up. You, well, you do it, you, you do it from a baseline. Right. Okay. It's I a see. percentage decrease. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Actually, Steve Bastek had the idea that um, maybe we should con be considering closing um, town hall on Fridays, do going to a four-day mm. work week, and then we would have four-day weekends. You know, like when there's Veterans Day, they would have been take place would be mm. closed four days, and that there would be a lot of energy savings mm -hmm. doing that. And since we have shortened hours in the summer on, on Fridays anyway, we just a lot of close it during the energy crisis many places did that uh, i did it uh, closed the university down for uh, 
the, all the Christmas vacation for instance. Mm -hmm. This is how we got February yeah. vacation. Yeah, yeah. right. So yeah. it's just a piece in the paper. You didn't a couple save any money at all. This. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You still had a heat twice. Yeah, you still. Yeah. <laughs> well, in general, yeah, but yeah. I mean, um, no, it's true. Yeah. All we do is get less work. How would you feel yeah. about that? <laughs> and, and. I, I mean, and so there are there are yeah. other things we can do. Yeah, I think we just have to weigh that against kind of the reduced service to the town. You know, in the yeah. summer we do it because there's fewer people in town. Um, that's our justification. In the winter time, yeah. I mean, people aren't full. You know, if you have longer hours on the other days, maybe you could serve more people. You know, I will say, though, going back to the prior comment about, um, you know, savings for the town, I, I think it's an interesting idea, though, to think about uh, not just around energy, but just uh, some incentives for um, people being creative about how they do their work or really thinking about it and thinking, is there, for instance, if we, if we thought about technology and have we, have we done everything we can to um, put things online or have things, you know, electronic mm -hmm. as opposed to doing it all in, with hard paper. Well, um, and we, but anyway, I'm just saying it, as a general um, concept, and getting, the, say, for instance, town hall staff, and and volunteers to to be conscious of of where money is spent and are there ways to be more um, frugal or or change the way we operate that would save money. I think that's a good thing to have people looking at. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it requires a lot of management. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we whether we have the resources to devote to that is the, is the issue. But it's but it's, it's a wonderful idea. We we do it the diff the other way. We just don't give them the money in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> well, that certainly well, incentivizes we people. We could, we could change the name and call it the Energy Task Force and Cost Savings Task, the Energy and Cost Savings Task Force. There you go. And just yeah, assign all right. it. Yeah, because it'll just get done then. Yes, it will right. just get done then. <laughs> All right, okay. but we need to Thank go back, you. though. No, we so, need to make oh. this motion to, oh. about the EV charger. Right, yeah. Right? I, need, I do need a decision from you guys yeah. on a couple of these things for so that when Eversource comes and asks you to sign this, you know, are you willing to sign the paperwork? Um, I think we're going to have to come back and have a public hearing just like you did for the other street stuff to actually get the trenching under. So I need yeah. to plan for that before you can do that. But, you know, anything you can do on my list of four items um, to approve this would be great. Well, we have a motion here about um, the site host agreement. Okay. Yeah. So, shall we go ahead yeah. with yeah. that? All right. So, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to execute the site host agreement between NSTAR Electric Company, doing business as Eversource Energy, 247 Station Drive, Westwood, Mass, 02090, and Town of Carlisle, to install an electric vehicle charger in the Carlisle Public School parking lot for the property located 83 School Street, Carlisle, Mass. Assessor's parcel number 14-29-0-14-28-0 at no cost to the town and to authorize the chair or town administrator to sign contract documents. Second. I just have, sorry, one quick thing about this it says to install an electric vehicle charger. Is that all you need? Even though it's potentially more than one down the road, yeah, I mean you could. Does that you could work? That singular or plural, if you wanted to. It's, it's fine right now. We're just doing one now. Okay. And if we do need to do more, we'll have to come back to you guys anyway. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Um, uh, there's a motion, and okay. Alan seconded. Yep. Uh, I just have a quick question. Um, did um, town council review this contract? Uh, I separate. Yeah. Yes. And they, they said it looks okay? Generally, you, you don't get to make many changes when it's the utilities language. It's from <laughs> past experience. Council reviews them, but it's kind of fruitless to ask them to change their standard ag agreement. So, uh, so I know that Jenny Merrill did review it, but uh, I don't know that we've heard back from her, but I don't think she'll recommend any changes. Can we just say pending yeah. town council review? Yeah. 
Any, any, any recommended Authorized changes by town council? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll just add that to the end. Accepted. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Any further you have that questions, Jen? discussions? Okay. Uh, those in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 And we will continue the discussion of uh, the revolving slash um, budget yeah, funds uh, when there's more information. Yeah. I think that was very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. And thanks for joining the planning group. Yeah. Yes. All right. Somebody's got to do it. Take yeah. it away, Tim. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, the board everybody the out. So. Personnel board uh, uh, requests the personnel board has reviewed and acted upon the eight uh, requests that uh, the board sent uh, for their consideration. Uh, just to review, there were uh, uh, four recommended new positions prior year requests and uh, two requests for regrading of positions and I think at the last meeting you asked me uh, to provide some background to you and my recommendations uh, on the requests and I've done that uh, here in this uh, in this memo you, you probably noted that uh, I do not recommend any of the new positions and not because I don't think they're Worthy requests, or that we don't need those positions, but I, you know, I simply don't think we can afford them in this budget cycle. And uh, you know, a number of boards made very compelling uh, presentations. The Council on Aging is one I would cite. You know, they were very well prepared, and they made a great case uh, for the need for the you know additional outreach social worker. But uh, uh, I, you know, I just I just don't think that uh, that we can afford new positions this budget year. I even recommended against our own request for yeah. <laughs> for budget position. Just put that in for sure. Yeah. Okay. Like I, yeah. In good conscience, I couldn't recommend the uh, you know. Mm. Heard it against herself and won. Yeah. <laughs> There's just one, but uh, uh, the board of health uh, had two requests, and, and the public health nurse, I think, again, very worthy goal was funded uh, uh, through a grant, I think, in the past. Uh, but it, I think it's a nice to have, but is it a must to have kind of position? For the town to be fully funding it you know there may be discretionary grants out there to continue it and that might be a way to keep it going but uh, I don't know that we can fit it into this year's budget one I I'd point out uh, you, you recall the request from the Board of Health to combine this sort of the two part-time administrative mm. assistants into a single one and yeah. That's last big. year the board kind of pushed that back and said give us a, a, a stronger position with more duties more responsibilities more Show us some succession planning. Show us that this position, this individual could, you know, stand in the shoes of, of Linda when she's out or on vacation mm. or whatever. And to their credit, they did that. They, they, they significantly <clears throat> enhanced the position, the result of which is that it, it, it graded out as a, at a grade seven position, not a grade five anymore. So now, not, you know, not only is it, you know, would it be a 30 hour position, you know, benefit eligible, but it's not cost neutral anymore because you're not just combining mm -hmm. the two part-time mm -hmm. salaries. I mean, mm -hmm. it's now right. two it was grades never, higher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was so, never cost neutral, a, but it's even right. yeah. less yeah. neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <gasps> so, yeah. so I guess, it, it, you know, make the long story short, not, I don't recommend any of the new positions. As far as uh, what I do recommend, the two, the two requests from prior years, uh, the town clerk's request, what well, was made by the prior town clerk, uh, and I, I talked with uh, our acting town clerk, Peggy, and she wanted to maintain the request. Uh, when Mary was uh, full-time town clerk, she worked a 35-hour-a-week schedule. Peggy works a 30-hour schedule. So being a first-time town clerk, I think she's going to need all the support mm -hmm. she can get. So I think this request for more hours for an assistant town clerk is probably needed, you know, uh, you know more, you know, than ever, really, because... You know, Mary was an experienced town clerk, and she felt the need for support. And I think you know the need is still going to be there. Mm -hmm. in, in Peggy's case, the Conservation Commission that request has been made, I think, three or four years in a row now. Yeah, and I, I, I do made it when I was on Comscom. I, <laughs> I do <laughs> agree that that uh, the, you know the things have grown, the duties and responsibilities. I, I support the request, but what I, I when I discussed it with Sylvia some time ago, I said. We've got to change the way we do some some things there. The DARE program is one example. I mean, if it's going to take $1,500 of staff time to administer 
a program where we're taking in 500 bucks in fees, then we're not so setting the fees correctly. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, fees I think have that, to be appropriate. Yeah, I mean, and you can set fees as, you know, I mean, you're not gouging anyone. You're just, you know, recovering your costs to administer the program. Right. Right. So, and there's another request. I think I'm in my report. I think maybe that's why Sylvie was here. They wanted to use some more money from the intense uh, account to cover the deer program. Again, it gets back to, I think, setting the, the fees, you know. I think. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's one of those things. If the fees are too high and people don't apply for the application, then you don't need the hours, right? Yeah, so it right. solves itself, right? So I, I think, yeah, I, I agree 100% with raising the fees. I think they have to look at their fees again because um, when I was on Conscom, we raised them and it was it was still minimal. Um, you know, maybe we should do that with the Board of Health. You know, as we think of this succession planning, mm -hmm. you know, the, and the number two is going to be, you know, a more expensive, more experienced individual. Um, you know, maybe we do need to rethink the fee structures of, of every board, you know, just to right. cover Review. some of these costs. Um, well, I just want to make a couple comments just about the DEER program having served, serving as the liaison um, to the committee. <clears throat> First of all, it's, um, you know, maybe it's really comes back to the Board of Selectmen and us thinking about having uh, issued a charter to a, a, the group to implement this program, not, not thinking about, n not um, having a, looking at what, what was it gonna cost us to actually manage it. And I think what happened is that um, the first year, I think it was significantly more time to help get it set up, and this year was less than it was last year. Um, I, I haven't spoken directly to um, Mary, uh, but just being on the committee, we've talked about it recently, and just, um, I mean, I think there are two things. One is, it, we, the, the uh, program is uh, designed to do a service for the town, and, um, yet at this, and, and at the same time, we're talking about the use of public land, which is open to the public, and I don't know how much you can charge people to do something, do an activity on that land, on that public land. Um, I don't, I don't know how that works, but it seems to me we 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 need to think about that. And also, um, I think we need a more definite, a, a more definitive description of what we expect the um, the assistant. Um, I'm sorry, what's her conservation agent? Um, oh, no, not the agent, whatever we're calling Mary. Was she the assistant? Assistant, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what, what is it that she's expected to do for the DEER program, and then what is the committee expected to do? Because I think actually we, we're anticipating that it's going to be less of her time. At each year, it's going to get easier. There are going to be fewer um, resident calling in to ask questions and the because um, I mean this year what we saw was that I think we only brought in one new hunter compared to last year so we're we know who the hunters are and so that whole process is faster anyway I, I just think we should um, just as an example that's something I think we as the Board of Selectmen when we're initiating a new program we need to take some responsibility for thinking about the cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, the third category, there were two requests uh, just to have positions regraded, uh, police department, administrative assistant, and the board of assessors. Uh, in the case of police department, uh, it, it uh, was regraded from grade four to grade five, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I, I would certainly recommend making that uh, change. I, I, I do want to point out that in, in a lot of uh, other communities, that position is is a higher grade. It's more akin to the Board of Selectmen's administrative assistant because of the high degree of confidentiality. That both positions are, you know, privy to uh, you know uh, confidential personnel information, litigation information, mm -hmm. collective yeah. bargaining information. And so a lot of times they, they grade out in a very uh, similar similar way 
In fact, they're the only two positions that if there were a clerical union, I've probably said this before, they couldn't be in the union because they're perceived as being confidential managerial employees. So the fact so that you're it, saying you, you're surprised it wasn't graded higher than a five? Yeah, I, actually, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's an increase. I'm not going to argue against it, but I think it, it could have, you know, I was surprised it did not grade out, you know, closer to a, 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 a seven. And you made honest. that argument to the personnel board? Right. Yes. No. They, they they looked at it a number of different ways, and and the chief met with them a couple of times, and you know I, th I I'm sure he's disappointed, but uh, uh, it's not uncommon that that position mm -hmm. sometimes grades higher. In the case of the board of assessors, they they found no change in the grade of that position. I know that the board of assessors are very unhappy about that action, but that's that's they, they graded it two weeks in a row, and it, it didn't come out. Uh, any higher, so uh, they they want to meet with the personnel board and continue to discuss it. But this is where things stand now. They've taken action on every request that's been in front of them, and then now it's you know for this board to meet with the finance committee. I think you do on December 10th and start talking about you know, what positions if any you would recommend adding to the FY21 budget cycle. So that's kind of where I came out on most of these requests. Mm -hmm. So can I ask a quick question about the town clerk one? So yeah. this is the assistant town clerk, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I thought we had talked about um, whether or not she wanted to work the additional hours, and um, yeah, this, this request actually stay, put her yeah. over the number of hours she was she wanted to work. Uh, if you were to go back to that position. Yeah, and did we figure out yeah. if she could do the zoning board stuff too? Yes, town council said that's that's not a conflict. Okay, good. There are other, other clerks that work for other boards, and that's yeah. not uncommon. Okay, perfect. The the salary is is the salary no matter what number of hours the individual works. Is what council said. Yeah. So does she get it's considered an elected position's salary? Right, but so she doesn't get paid additional for doing the zoning board, CBA stuff, or does she? She, oh yeah. So yeah. she gets if hourly. she does five hours, she gets the, that hourly as well. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. In addition right. to the yeah, yeah. Okay. salary. Okay. Gotcha. Right. So the assistant clerk would go from twenty four to thirty hours per week next year under this. That's about a seven thousand dollar cost. But then they'd have coverage Monday through Friday, nine to three for both. Look, both the clerk and the assistant would be there at all times. But the, the 30 hours is more hours than the c person who's currently in it wants to work in a week. No. No, she but wants she to work 30. She wants to work 30. She doesn't want to work 35. Right. Right. Yeah. I thought she, she was working 24 work as, a, as an assistant, and then when she became clerk, she wanted to work 30. Yeah. The 9 to 3, that the yeah. Monday through Friday, that the right. office as clerk. Open. As clerk. As clerk. Right, but we're not talking about the clerk position here. We're talking about the assistant clerk no, position. No, you're right. Yeah. It, so it's, Are we adding hours that she's not going to be willing to work if she was... Goes back to that role? Yeah. No. You know this? Because two weeks ago, I, I thought it was very different. I think it's 30 hours. She wants to do 30 hours. Yes. And that's what this brings it up to. Right. Okay. Six additional hours to... Right. For the assistant. Right. To, for right. the assistant... Uh, that will bring it up to 30 hours because she was working 24. Right. I, I just thought it would, I thought they were different numbers two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. No, it's a, as clerk, she doesn't want to work the 35. Right. So that was, right. that was the whole thing is that, yeah. you know, now we're. But that will change after the election. That right. might change. Well, yeah, it'll be well, a different. It should change. Yeah. yeah well, it should be we'll a different see. individual. We'll see yeah. if she runs or if she doesn't run or if she wants to. Well, no. but the, the job should be posted full time. Right. The, yes. the, the election is for a 35 hour a week employee. Right. Well, in fact, that's also we need to talk about. Yeah. yeah. How fast can we get that warrant? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's to a make good it an time appointed position yeah. so that it's yeah. a it posted job again, because yeah. honestly, um, an elected person could go in there for two hours mm -hmm. and right. be the clerk. Look at our senators. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> look at us. Yeah, look at us. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, it's depressing, but I, I think, um, we should, 
uh, accept this recommendation. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Responsible. Well, let's talk I a little bit more about the Conservation Commission. Could we just increase the, the fees? Has that program started, though? Well, we can't. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 This year. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we this we would increase higher. the fees for next year. Yeah. Oh, for the but even, program, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I mean, even if there's a surplus, yeah, right? Even if her hours go down, there's still a surplus that we put towards conservation commission. You know, I mean, we can still because a lot of it is land preservation, and you know, it's all going to be so conscom related. You yeah, know? but a lot of these expenses are because of. Uh, permitting, right? Yeah. yeah. So it makes but sense. You're talking broader than the deer program. You're exactly. talking about it, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So it no, makes exactly. sense that, you know, why should we increase our budget if, right. if it's being driven because of permits? Mm. Increase mm. the permit fees right. and yeah. keep it coming out of the intense account. Exactly. Ah, okay. Because it's like taxing everybody right. 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 for particular right. projects that people Ex want to do. Yeah. yeah. Right. That exactly. doesn't make sense. That doesn't make me. sense. Right. right. You're right. So right. there like, should be. We should. Okay. Yeah, like John's budget, it, it, it's it's self-sustaining, right? I mean, and he actually, I think he has a surplus, but Tibier, yeah. Okay. And there there are some, I know there are some limitations to Conscom as to how much you can actually charge, but I think we're still low. So can we have yeah. a review of that? Of or, the fees? Of the fees? Fee structure? Of, sure. Of, I'd like to do that before agreeing to increase our budget yeah. to cover the costs of permits. Okay, yeah. I mean, I and I think all three, right? I think planning board, board of health, planning and board, board yeah, health and and, um, Conscom. and Conscom. Yeah, and ask them for a. Yeah. When when was the last time they um, reviewed their fees and what are their fees and? Well, board of health did it a couple of years ago. Be okay. clear that the intensity count Conscom. can't be just used to hire people without our approval. Right. Yeah. Right. You can't just go and add more hours just because you have the money. Right. Because that gets us into trouble. Yeah. Yep. Well, no, and that's the thing with the intense account is that they do have to come and ask permission. Right. right. And then those are very specific. I know, like, some of the wetland fees that came in, you know, because there's, there's our fee and then there's a state fee, and then the state gives some of that money back, but it can only be used for specific things. You know, it's, it's really, it's... Yeah, but, I mean, okay. oftentimes we're asked for permission after the money's been spent. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree, right. And right. That, that, that has to stop. Change. You know, it's like yeah. John spent... The money on like a plotter or something or large you know i, th I think you need to ask before you do right it. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. because really you know when have we ever said no right no you can't spend out of your own intense well account. this year we may be sending oh. saying no no i'm um, saying out of their own <laughs> intense account oh. though right well even well, then who knows uh so i mean i support the police administrative assistant confused about the town clerk but I support it I I'd like more information about how we can get the money another way for the Conservation Commission because there's no intense account for the town clerk right no no, no that, all go, that all goes <laughs> no I mean dog license fees <laughs> yeah whatever Gee, happened why with didn't that? we think of that no, but whatever happened with that I mean because the yeah, fees went up they right went up not much but, but they went up a little no bit. but yeah. but they went down for some people but yeah, right. but mm -hmm. Mary was gonna. She was gonna do that online tracking system, right? Did we ever get? Oh yeah. Maybe we can dig up that information. Oh, my dog just got his rabies shot. I better get my little tail in there. Yeah, because we were supposed to be able to go after people who didn't. Pay. His little tail in. <laughs> Ooh, I might report you. <gasps> okay. Uh, just, we'll get next year's at the same time. Yeah, yeah and I mean, just yes. if, if people are saying, I I agree with Tim's um, yeah. Tim's recommendations. Yeah, and I do think Conscom, you know, they have had an increased workload, but I, you know, um, and same thing goes for Board of Health. You know, if they if they want to have that position, um, you know, be a, a stronger position and, and a better paid position, then yeah, we need to look at the at the fees. I mean, that's because it's unsustainable the other way. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you guys raised your fees. So are we all in agreement that we're accepting Tim's recommendations except for, well, the, for the Conservation yeah, Commission? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> I mean, well, unless somebody... We're in agreement. We're going to see how it impacts the budget. Yes. yes. Yeah, but for yes. now. So FinCom should put those in, but not the other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the grade four at the police station and the... Yes. 
Okay. And the town clerk. Yeah. Yes. You should see how those impact the budget, but they should not put any of the other ones in. Right. right. So which ones? The, four. Well, the police. The, the four that are recommended, but not the, not no, the others. It's the not recommended. Don't, don't put the not recommended ones right. in. Right, so put the recommended three, ones yeah. in, it's but not three, the three, though, others. right? Three. Well, three. it's the uh, yeah, three, 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 three recommended. Three no recommended. Four so three. Okay, no, change. that's why. Okay, that's why. I was yeah, the police, when, put the four in department, them. administrative assistant, and then the town clerk. Yeah. Right, right. Not, the commission. not the conservation commission Not the conservation commission yet, until we get more information. Yeah, about the police. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Oh. Town government organization. I think we can do this pretty fast. We're sending the policy about ambulance fees. Um, it just doesn't make sense to have yep. fees in the policy book, in my opinion. Yeah. The only the only question I have is um, how if if we just rescind it. Um, is there a way that we still remain involved in understanding how much they're charging and where that's going? And because it's a lot of money, right? It's it's how they pay for the ambulance, yep. and uh -huh. so we don't we don't have a whole lot of you know. It's a strong chief. So so the policy should be not what is the fee, but how is the fee accounted for, and that we would like to have. Or what's the structure around this fee, this thing, right? I mean, we had that for some reason, right? You know, well, but it wasn't it, clear it went what defunct, the defunct. But you know, do we just open it up and say it is whatever they decide it is, and therefore the money can be used on whatever we they don't. Want to use it on? We don't generally determine the fee. That's determined by so agencies that pay. Yeah, it and, used and, to and be. It's, well, according yeah. to this, it still is. But yeah, the full payment. What Brian is saying in here is. But it used to be set by the board of selectmen. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Now right. it's not. Never yeah. since I've been on it. Right. But, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. back in the eighties. <laughs> um, so rather than just getting rid of it, I just was wondering, you know, is there, was there a reason it was there other than just setting the fee, yeah. and yeah. and do we just delete it and then there's there's nothing, right? Then there's just a void in or replace it. No, know. but I, I, I agree then, though, that the policy is not what is the fee, but the policy has to be what is our relationship to the to the to fire, the fund. To the fund. Yeah. Yeah, right. And that the fund is still the selectman's fund. Right? I mean we're under the control we're under of the, the control board. of the board. I don't know that or, it is, right? I mean, that's what I was do asking. We, I don't, oh, okay. Well, maybe. Tim, is, Tim, we is this a fund we have any control over at all, or is it all under the well, budget? There's, the, there's now a regional committee that that uh, sets the fees in uh, connection with this ALS service company, Pro EMS. So we, we, we've got a diminished role in the fee setting, I guess. There, there are maybe 10 or 12 uh -huh. communities that are part of the. And then when we collect the fee, it goes into a fund. And that's just, it's what like the, the fire chief can spend that on whatever he wants. Or do we have, or does town have to? Is that part of his budget? I mean, do we know what then? Oh, I, I, what I see it in the budget. It comes in as receipt, but then it has to be appropriated out the but, next year if he wants to use. Yeah, but he has to ask for the retained it. revenue from the previous okay. year's ambulance receipts, right? So, but that, that's, that's what we, we're asking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's, Indeed. that's back in my way throat. Yeah, I think that's the, I think I that's how it's handled. Yeah. You think it goes into the general yeah, fund? Yeah, but there's a line item for it. Okay, as a line item, and then he has to ask for it back. Right, um, he wants to do an ambulance, ambulance. he's got to ask, right. You know, I think it's the line item is the ambulance fund, and then it buys the ambulance at the end. But we, you know what, can we, could we get that information, mm -hmm. please? I, yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I can look, I mean, I, yeah, we can look in the, in the, in the annual book. So it's, it's in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or what if we just say the ambulance fees are set by this this group? You know, whatever. You know, the end state regulation. Kind of like we, what we said for the mileage rate was. Rather than setting a mileage rate, we said the IRS it shall be yeah. the IRS. Right. Yeah. What if in this case, rather than just getting rid of it, if we just say the ambulance fee is set by this? Because then if it changes, we can 
we can say, well, it, now it, it's it's set by this other thing. I just worry about all of a sudden just having nothing. I understand, but I, what I think is more important is rather than the, what the fee is and who sets it is what happens. Right. The control right. of it. The right. right. And I'm less worried about that if it has to go to town meeting. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's before. Okay. So let's table this mm -hmm. and come back yeah. to it next week. Okay. I thought it would be easy, but obviously it ain't. I make everything hard. I know you do. You really. Oh. <laughs> and we had a draft um, policy uh, for the election of chair persons, chair people. Chair persons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and. I'm wondering if it should be in the form of a memo. I mean, I don't. I think we should send it as a memo later, but I think in the in the policy book, I'd rather not have memos. So I would just take the the first, you know, the two from subject right. mm -hmm. and the first sentence out, and because the policy, and then at the end, you know, we can say they'd adopted. Yeah, or it would like just say at the top. Policy relative to the election in term of chair. So you take off yeah, the select yeah, title, right? But yeah. yeah, and then the what you've got below. Still reading? Seems fine to me. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. So this this whole thing is written as a recommendation, right? It's the policy. It's further recommended it's the policy. That, yeah. 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 Well, no, it it, it's, it says you. Because yeah. the, the 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 beginning of the paragraph after the list says it's right. further recommended. So if it's a recommendation, the recommendation we, is for the vice chair. Why don't? Well, it says it's. Okay. It's further okay, recommended. It's, it's okay, so recommended. It is recommended. Well, further makes me think that the beginning oh, part was okay. a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Select. So. I was just going to say, if, yeah. if it's a recommendation, roll the. You know, yeah, the okay. The just take the word further out. Officials yeah. into it too. Yeah. The intent was that that it, yeah. it was that last part was had just to be with. The so the first, first is mandatory. The second is a recommendation. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. At this point, um, this is about election of officers. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other policies that we have around um, committees that we would like to add to the section? I was thinking like the policy on committees, meeting with the boss, the, the selectmen annually, or some of them annually, mm -hmm. some of them quarterly, some of them, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, we should go through our, our list of committees. Some we don't need to see quarterly, but some of them we do want to see quarterly. And we don't have any policy as to our, our expectations. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I don't know if that should be mixed with this or as a separate policy. Um, yeah, I wonder if that's kind of a part of a guidelines on sure the, the role of liaisons. And you know, and maybe the liaisons could, you know, could say, you know, could could identify like the time period that they should be coming in and talking, and because okay. uh, we're we're not, it's not, we're not very clear as to what a liaison does, right? And so maybe we could just hammer that out a little bit more, okay. And right? Then, okay. And one of those things would be the liaison figures out how often that committee should be talking to the whole board of selectmen rather than just that liaison. All right. Well, I think certainly the the the, board, the committees that spend a lot of money, for instance, yeah. the municipal facilities should be coming in quarterly. Yeah. I'm not sure we want to meet the 55 committees a year. No, no. no but, but I mean, but I think some of them really need to be meeting with us more often yeah. and get yeah. direction more often. Yeah, yeah. everybody with a budget. Instead of flailing and you know? flailing around yeah. and then wasting their time because yeah. at the end of the year we say, uh, uh, right. <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, well, plus they can give us a heads up, you know, I mean, usually right. you try to get a heads up from your liaison, but if, you know, they come in and Conscom says, oh, yeah, well, you know, we've got two new properties that we have to maintain and blah, 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 and this is where the maintenance fees are going, you know, it gives you a heads up in July, 
you know, and maybe that's when we do it in the summer when it's kind of a lull mm -hmm. for okay. everybody. We're going into a new fiscal year. Yeah. Um, you know, people can say why they're disappointed that they didn't get something for the previous year, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just it's a good time to kind of meet with with folks because usually there's not too much on the docket, you know. Okay. But then maybe you got to meet with them more often. But, you know. but it also, too, like the Carlisle Youth Commission, right, which is coming up, mm. we didn't even really realize there was a committee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, you know, there's yeah. stuff like that, too, mm -hmm. where we should really just evaluate the list. I, that's what I was you also know? saying. Yeah. I think yeah. we really need to look at that list and say, right. Who, who are they? What are we doing? With, right. And what are they doing for us? Do exactly. We, you know. Right. Right. Do we need them? Do, do they we need them? Do they need us? Right. Um, yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So um, for this one, the first sentence, do we keep in the first sentence? We just say the this, following policy. The so that's the title for it, the, or uh, the uh, policy, policy relative okay. to the election and term of chairpersons. This, okay, so policy yeah. relative to the election yeah. and term of chairpersons for all appointed, appointed town committees. Boards and committees. This only says per, for, you wrote, you wrote, for all appointed town committees. Well, the top says boards, the, the two. Town committees. Says boards and committees. Right. All town boards and committees. Oh, that's two. Yeah. All boards. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, but the thing is, the boards are elected. And this is really a policy for our committees. No. We don't want the boards to have the same. We, we don't have jurisdiction over what they do. They're elected boards. We don't have a we jurisdiction over who's on them. Well, uh, so yeah. so, so you think we have jurisdiction over how they operate um, their boards? I mean, they can. Well, yeah, I've, I've, I assume so. That's an interesting yeah. concept. <laughs> I mean, I. Well, they get their funding from yeah. the town, and we. And if there's no chair, if true. they didn't want to have a chairperson, they don't have to. Um, and who do you deal with? Yeah. yeah okay so okay so this has to be for all boards um town boards point, and committees appointed yeah, town committees and elected boards yeah. so this is not a recommendation this is a policy right. and it also says then in this policy that they no person shall serve as chairperson for more than one contiguous term except when no other candidate is willing to serve and with the approval of the Board of Selectmen. So that means that other town boards have to come to us if they want to have the same Chairman. chair. Chair twice. Twice. Or four times. Okay. For eight. Do you have any for <laughs> 10? <laughs> <with that? laughs> or in depth. No, I thought actually we already had that. Like when I was on his comm every year, I would let them know that I was chair again because nobody wanted to. Yeah, but his comm is a committee, it's not a board, right? Or it's a commission. Yeah, but that's not the point. The I point mean, was, did we have something that would... That, yeah. 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 No, no, that that yeah. we had. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just, where, I, where I'm differentiating is um, they're not elected officials. Other elected officials are being asked to come to us to request that they have the same chair more than once back to back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, part of... Having been chair of I don't know, 75 different committees now, it, it ends up being that people just don't want to step up because they, you know, oh, it's going to be a huge time commitment. But, you know, we kind of give them the nudge, like, look at. It's important you know, for yeah. people to, for those things to rotate. Right, right. Yes. exactly. Because then you get. Of what they do. Yeah. No, exactly, yeah. right? For succession right. purposes. Well, well that's, yes. that's just it. Yeah. Somebody leaves and yeah. all of a sudden right. all that history is lost and nobody's right. got the experience to be yeah. chair. You really need to do that. So, yeah, yeah I, I think having that in there is, is fine. Okay. So, I wonder, though, is, is what if we don't approve? <laughs> right? What's, what's the repercussion? Then they have to elect a new chair. Yeah, I mean, they, they must have a vice chair. Well, they don't necessarily, they don't necessarily have to have the vice chair. Yeah. We're just recommending that they have a vice yeah. chair. Yeah. I mean, that, is, that has been an issue. Do we, um, do we want to then not recommend that they have a vice chair, but that we insist that they have a vice chair? 
recommendation. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. We'll yeah. just yeah. Be, little, be too overbearing. We'll just be. Your we'll question just be a little is, yeah, bit what overbearing. happens if they bring yeah. their yeah. the name of the <laughs> candidate and we don't approve of it? And they don't do anything about it. I mean, right. What? 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 What's the consequence? What's our recourse? Yeah. Are we setting it up so that there's actually we have no recourse if they don't do it? Well, it depends on the. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Or if it's, or if it's just cut their no, salary. Yeah, flat, <laughs> flatten their budget. Or if, we, or, or if we just say they have to notify us, and then so then we at least know that it's going. We can monitor it, and then we can say, hey, you know, guys, we really need to get yeah. somebody else yeah, on who's going to do it. Yeah. You know what? I think we're not going to say no. I think we, but I think we do want to have them come here for yeah. our, our approval, right. and we'll approve it. But we'll say that this, but. Start again. start you grooming your this. next person. Yeah, that's exactly. Because right. um, yeah. we, we okay. won't do right. we won't approve this next time. Right. So I think, I think I think leaving it like this, putting a little more pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. So with those amendments, they, uh, it would read that the title would be policy relative to the election and term of chairpersons for all appointed town committees and elected boards. An election for chairperson is to be held annually by each committee, preferably soon after the annual town meeting and after new appointments have been made. No person shall serve, serve as chairperson for more than one contiguous term, except when no other candidate is willing to serve and with the approval of the Board of Selectmen. It is recommended that each committee elect, in addition to the chairperson, a vice chairperson who can serve in the absence of the chairperson and who also might succeed to the chair the following year. Although this policy is primarily for appointed, well, then I would take that last sentence out. Then it says, although this policy is primarily for appointed committees, it's recommended that it also be adopted by elected town boards. We'll take that out. We we'll take that out. Mm -hmm. yeah. We said it is for them at the t in the top. Yeah, at the top. You know, okay. I, or no? I, yes. No. The only thing I was just thinking as you read that, you know, I maybe we should require that they have a vice chair just so a meeting can happen if a chair. Yeah. isn't there you know i mean things can happen people travel people get sick whatever and you really shouldn't have to cancel a meeting i mean we have quorum issues as it is right but can't you just ask some other member of the committee to be the chair sure yeah. yeah you don't have to have it doesn't have to be the vice chair to run a meeting yeah but do you have to the board as i understand it the committee has to uh elect prior to the meeting yeah. That person is chair yeah. for the meeting where there are people aren't going to be there. And, and that has happened. However, a vice chair can automatically assume the role. Right, oh, exactly. Yeah, okay. so it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, it's just more involved. Well, there again, see, where is that written down so that a new. Um, I may be wrong. Am I wrong, Tim? No, that, I think that's. Yeah. But is, is, that that just, our, is that our is policy? Is that just habit or is no, that. I think that's, like or is rules, a, is Robert's state, rules of Robert's order, rules. maybe or something. Or, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I think it's a it's it's a well, common. Yeah. It's common, but is it is it a regulation or a requirement, or it's just sort of the way we've Custom. done things? Yeah, yeah. Custom. Yeah. Custom. Yeah. Well, do we want to well, adopt we Robert's rules. rules then for our committees for operation no. of our committees? Not. Maybe no. That's a policy. no, we don't. And you're locked into. Well, see, that's so we want to adopt. We want to adopt certain of Robert's rules, and if no. that's one that we think is important, mm. yeah. well, I don't know that it's Robert rules. I mean, I think well, or whatever. I, I I'm just trying I mean, to. My own feeling. I don't think we need to mandate chair persons. I think the committees can handle that. You themselves. mean vice chairs? Vice okay. chairs. Yeah. Okay. You all right with that? No, I don't care. No, I just think from a from a logistics standpoint, right? Yeah. People aren't going to know that because I mean, we did it on the housing trust. When Carrie was away and Bill was traveling, we didn't have trust meetings, and right. we're a fairly knowledgeable yeah. group, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I mean, yeah. it's just it's one of those things when you have a vice chair, they know when the chair is not there, I will be chair. You know, that that's I'm I'm just doing it from a very yeah. simplistic standpoint. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, th I I I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I'm reluctant to mandate it. Well, so we're we're fun. recommending that there is a vice chair. Yeah. yeah so we're know. recommending there's a vice chair here. Yeah. We're recommending. Maybe, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Exactly. So, so we recommended a vice chair, and we'll leave it at that. Okay. So, we need a have, motion? Are you good? Or we don't need a motion? Uh, we do, but I think we should have a clean copy, and then we'll adopt it next week yeah, or next next meeting. meeting. Okay. Okay. Don't you think? 
eraser. It's not urgent. It's, it's not exactly urgent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's another thing done. And I worry that every time we look at it, we're going to want to change something. <laughs> no, uh, we'll be good. We'll be good. All right. Well, maybe uh, by that time, Alan will smarten up. <laughs> 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 Appointments and resignations of the Carlisle Youth Commission. Who are you thinking of, Mason? <laughs> I'm sorry. Who wants to talk to you about this? <laughs> Do we have any background on this? Yeah, so. the letter besides yeah. the letter. Yeah, so, I, well, I guess this was kind of something that I had um, heard from somebody that, uh, so the, the Youth Commission actually, one, they have a, a line item in the budget, but also, two, um, they've been doing a number of things at the school, so they do that Friday Night Live. Um, yeah. I think. Are they involved with the spaghetti supper? No, um, but maybe. This person but, was, yeah. But yeah, Lori Eckler, um, she's been on the committee for a while, and uh, the committee's gotten kind of stale, so it's really just been her. Um, and, you know, really in order to have a proper committee, if they do have a budget, you want it just to be a legit committee. Um, so I think, was it Mary reached out to her? Or did you reach out to her? I think Mary reached out Mary's to her. Mary's the elder did. Right? Yep. Yeah, um, just to say, look at, you know, you're not actually... Um, a legit committee but just you and with a bunch of people who are there by name only um so she recruited some some folks uh i think it's a it's a great committee yeah, yeah. um so uh so now it's just going to make it more legitimate and uh, i think um you know i because actually sam just went to the friday night live thing I, I think they take money at the door so i don't know if they even realize they have a budget um do they have a budget yeah i mean how much yeah what kind it's, of a it's just a few hundred dollars. Oh yeah, it's not it's yeah. not significant, it's, but there's something something okay. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. They get an event Friday, don't they? Yep. Yeah. 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 So um, so yeah, I, I you know I think it's a great com committee to have commission to have whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but and now it's just you know now they should have you know meetings that are posted and you know they can have minutes and that sort of thing to see why. But this is this is a perfect example of you know, uh, Lori has been the chair forever, pretty much. Um, and you know, as people as and their kids member. get out of their system, hmm? and sole and member, sole member. Yeah. Sole member, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chair and vice chair, and, and bottle washer. <laughs> yeah, right. But as you know, but as 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 you know, kids move through the schools, right, and they move on to the high school. Mm -hmm. The parents just kind of fizzle right. off, yeah. right? But they never really get yeah. off the committee, right? But and clearly, um, everything she's been doing has been a bit of a problem because she's not a committee, right? Exactly. So this just kind of legitimizes all of. All so of I have that. a quick question, because I always do. The charge says six members. One, but two, three, four, five. It seems like it's seven, because unless Laura, Lori is no longer going to be on. No, yeah. Kathy's on the list twice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're looking at the letter. Yeah. That was yeah. what, that she's. No, on he's the, looking at the down. charter or the the motion. He's looking at the motion. I'm looking here. She's oh. only on once. But there's no, six she is twice. Hmm? See Kathy, Kathy. Either that or he has a vertical for business. She's there twice. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> but she doesn't have her cell phone. It, it, it's just she assuming she's as hard. She, she's yeah. staying on it. I, she, I believe she was she appointed. But she didn't in June. put her cell phone here. She was the only one appointed in June that's still going to be on it. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, she, she was appointed. Right. So these okay. are new. Yeah. Okay. So why are they all doing three-year terms all, all at once rather than staggered? I think that's the way the this. terms have been. And the is that right, Jen? And the they yeah. all expire at the same time. Yeah. I mean, what we can do is appoint that's, everybody that's, for three years, and then as some of these folks. Drop off. Drop off, which uh -huh. which will happen their kids. Three kids yeah, members. which like yeah, you know, yeah, you know, which yeah, you know, like Kathy McDonald. I mean, you know, right. Charlie and Parker are, are in sixth grade, and I think they're the youngest, right? So yeah, yeah. So she'll probably drop off in a couple of them. All right. Okay. Do you need a motion? Yes, please. I move that the board of selectmen vote to appoint the following individuals: K.D. Audet, forty-three East Street. Duraja Babu, 101 Hanover Road, Stephanie Keene, 123 Ember Lane, Kathy McDonald, 33 Noel Farm Road, Amy Smack, 114 Red Pine Drive, to serve on the Carlisle Youth Commission with a term expiring June 30th, 2022. Before we do a second. Before we hear a second, yes. Uh, should we throw Lori Eckler? in there so that she's the same term since we just said that everybody's three years 
you know. She's already been appointed. She's already been appointed till 2020, and we'll. Okay, um, so they're not all three years. They're not all right. Three years. Those, yeah. She's the institutional knowledge, and yeah. when she imparts right. it to those others, I suspect she will be out of there. Maybe, okay. yeah. I think she really enjoys it. Well, if she does, she's she can come for another three one. years. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Okay. We never yep. turn away a volunteer. No. Yeah. Why not? Okay. All right. Um, so that was made and seconded um, by Alan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I just want to make sure that we have it noted that one is only 2020. Yeah. All right. We're at uh, finally a little late. Apologize, guys. Um, the uh, TA's report. Okay. Uh, <coughs> it wasn't a TA report in the packet, right? Yes, sir. It was. Yeah. Not yeah. an electronic packet. Oh. No, it was. No. It should have been. Uh, oops. No. Well, I can. Uh, okay. The first fine. item was the, the bond on. anticipation notice that oh. you signed earlier. Second item is that we heard from Matt Herwick. He'd like to do the Christmas tree lighting on uh, Tuesday, December 3rd uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. on the town common. With your permission, it's starting to coordinate that activity. So that's like two weeks from tonight. It's not a night that you meet, so. Good. Yeah. I move the board. Nathan can be out there singing. Yeah. Yeah. I move that the board authorized Matt Herwick to conduct the annual Christmas on the Common tree lighting event on Tuesday, December 3rd from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on the Town Common. Second. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Okay. And here's a request from the Conservation Commission to use some funding from the intent account for activity that's already occurred. So, yeah. <laughs> in action with the DEER program. This is. Uh, or the estimate is 40 or 50 hours of uh, the assistance time to administer the program. Uh, so it's, you know, eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200 of staff time or something like that. The fees are nowhere near that uh, amount. So they've made a request. I hope that made it into the packet to use. Uh, I mean, their, their argument is that they had to spend part of the CONSCOM budget proper to administer the DEER program and it's taking away from other activities that they're behind on, like minutes and other kind of administrative details. But you said that's already been done, so we, if we said no, what would happen? You have to come out of their budget. You have to pull out of their budget. Well, we'd rather have it come out of the intense account. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, move on. So, yep. Yeah, do we, we, do we have to formally approve it? Only if you're approving it, if you want to we're think about it. We're not approving it, yeah. <laughs> uh, then we were contacted by the president of the dispatchers union, Kirk Bishop, that they wish to enter into negotiations. Their contract does not expire till next June 30th, but uh, wanting to get a head start on things, we got a, an email from Kirk. Uh, so. Normally, the bargaining team, uh, myself, two members of this board, two finance committee members, and the finance director. It's sometimes hard to schedule meetings when we have two FinCom members and two members of this board, but however you want to set up the negotiating team is, is fine with me. That's a big team for the police. We had a much smaller team, didn't we? It's maybe... Uh, did we have somebody mm -hmm. from FinCom for the police? Uh, when I was, yeah, I yeah. think so. We did. Just one, maybe. Was it Jim? Oh, just one. Just one. Yep. Was it Jim? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. it's easier when it's just one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. we people I'd can switch see off. See why we would need two. And no. Jim is available during the day. Yep. And okay. Liaises with them anyway. One or two members of this board. I don't know how you want to do it. Maybe appoint two and switch off, so you don't both have to go to every session. But well, whatever. we did it. I, we might, we, want one person. About we might want one person just so there's continuity, you know, and yeah. you know what the... Yes, it's easier. Well, <coughs> there wasn't that many meetings with the police. We, uh, no. we dispatched no. them rather quickly, unless so unless these guys have, you know, some really... <laughs> dispatch, dispatch quickly. Yeah. Dis <laughs> yeah, don't tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm willing to, to, to do it. 
bringing in Free. the big gun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you about the, the bombshell I dropped today. <laughs> That's a good bombshell, too. And then there's just um, the I got, I got a witness. <laughs> He's got, so I'll reach out to Finn Cullen on that one. Flack out of his. Jim to do it. Yeah, Are yeah, we going to take action on the Conscon thing? Oh, yeah, do I, we have to? No, we weren't. I got the impression you weren't going to. Yeah, why? I, I I don't really know why we wouldn't approve it. I think maybe it's we need to send a message on the intensity counts. If you come retroactively, we're not going to approve it. Yeah, we, maybe we just let people know that. Communicate that to them. Yeah, because yeah. I, I mean, I think it's just been the common practice that that's. I mean, because it's not an approval if it's after it's happened. Yeah, right. right. No, it's not. Right. I mean, that it's just a notification that they've done this. Right. You know? right. So therefore, we have no say. Well, right. and another thing too, I, you know, and I, the intense account is different than the. Don't they have a. They have one that's specifically for wetland related activities, right? Yeah. I mean, but but part of it too is, you know, her salary, right? You can always say that part of it goes towards wetland related activities, right? Mm -hmm. So it would technically it, it, technically I think what if this is that fun, then what they should say, what they have to say by law, is that um, most some of her time went to Deer Committee and she needed this additional funding to fulfill the wetland requirements of the position, blah, blah, you know, or, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. Yep. I, I don't, because I, I honestly, I don't think the intense account can be used for deer. Right. Right. So I think it's just got to be worded better. Okay. And also, you know, reading the, the memo from Sylvia, maybe I'm not understanding it, but it sounds like he says, as a priority, the time will be spent to become current with the backlog of meeting minutes. Um, so that it sounds like oh, yeah. it hasn't been done yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she because this she's trying to take the money out for a hundred hours. Fifty hours has already done been done, and then an additional fifty hours. No, but it's fifty hours of her time, which would have been spent doing. Minutes and right. miscellaneous wetland related things, right? Yes, it was yeah, now dedicated towards deer, yes. deer okay. stuff, deer. right? Okay. So, so it's just it's the the backlog of yeah. doing minutes and yeah. and that sort of thing. Oh, I see the addition. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, got yeah. It, yeah. Got it, got it, got yeah. So it's okay. to backfill the time that she would have spent doing wetlands related things, but it's. So does that mean she's going to work additional hours to put in the fifty hours? Yeah. So she would. In, instead of working, see, this is where this intense account's weird, right? Because she can get additional hours, uh -huh. right? But it's it's not part of her salary, you know what I mean? So this is this is where it's always yeah. been kind of, because every year there's been, you know, three grand or something pulled out of the intense account, you know, to supplement the hours, right? Mm -hmm. But it was never part of the salary, so she never got benefits on uh, it. She never got, yeah. you know, it was never consistent. So, you know, it all yeah. depended on what was on that intense account, so... Um, yeah, because there, there's always been a need for more hours, you know, I mean, and I think part of it is efficiency, but, um, you know, I think it, uh, um, you know, the wetland filings have gotten more and more complex and, you know, they just take up more and more Sylvia's time. Um, but anyway, I, I still, I think we need to evaluate the fees. You know, the other thing with Conscom too, is it's, you know, which I think people forget, it's also the management of all the conservation land in town, right? And we have a ton of it. Um, and that doesn't get funded anywhere. You know what I mean? So so there is that. There's, you know, just different contracts for the mowing and, you know, um, even things like, you know, uh, making sure that there are bags out at, you know, the cranberry bog, you know, for the dog things and, and you know, dealing with the barrels of the trash. There, You know, there's there's that general stuff that, that's associated with conservation land. Um, you know, that, that is also falls on CONSCOM um, that they don't have fees for, right? So just another thing to think about. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so do we need to uh, give this our approval? Well, I think... Yeah, well, the memo says is requesting for the current fiscal year. Right. They can't spend from that fund without the, this board's approval. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, rereading Sylvia's memo, I think it's to say that, yeah, it's to backfill mm -hmm. yeah. the time that was spent so on you, the you think that's legitimate? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, yeah, if, if it were for deer-related, I think maybe it's just the way it was written up in, right. in your thing that it just isn't. But it's, it's not for, yeah. Yeah, it's not it's for because deer. Because of the deer. It's because of the deer. Yeah. Damn deer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I propose we do a pay as you throw dog bag thing. There you go. <laughs> bog. Yeah. The problem is people wouldn't bag it and people wouldn't throw it. <laughs> so how do, how is it we go through bags? Yeah. yeah. Well, people just take them. Okay. Stick it in your pocket they thinking put, you're going to be good in. about it and then you don't bother. So I, yeah. Yeah. I move that we approve the spending of fifteen hundred dollars from the conservation intense account uh, as outlined in the memo dated october 21st 2019 from sylvia willard second and where did you get the fifteen hundred from it's in our letter it's, it's here thirteen hundred and forty two yeah all right so that's a good one so it up to 15. so you rounded well, it up tim to fifteen hundred so it's I really thirteen forty two my... yeah Okay. She in her memo she says thirteen forty two. Okay, all right, that's yeah. So I that's why I figured to you. I move <laughs> that we approve. It's okay. Can we go home? Yes. <laughs> I move we go home. Um, I move that we approve. Uh, Holy Jesus! The spending of thirteen hundred and forty two dollars out of the conservation uh, wetlands intense account as outlined in the letter dated October 29th, 2019 from Sylvia Willard, the Conservation Commissioner. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Shall we skip liaison reports because it's getting late? Except that, um, <laughs> Um, you can talk about it, your bombshell. I'm going to talk about my bombshell. Um, I requested that our new finance director um, give us scenarios of what the budget would look like if we had a 0% tax increase, 1% tax increase, and 2% tax increase for the year. And I asked the schools to do the same. Go. <laughs> I'm sorry, you asked the finance director or finance committee? The finance director. Jim Dar. The finance committee. The Jim Dar was there. He, He's a representative of the okay. finance uh, team. And uh, Susan Prey was there in the school. In the school. And was there any response? Was there any response? Yeah, they said they would do it. Yeah. Right, well, Jim said he would do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're skipping so, the reports till next time. Yeah. yeah. And then unless, we got to do I mean, the unless next. there's something burning. I mean, I actually think we just sent a strong message by not approving any of those. those well, those actually, positions. yes. It came, that's how, uh, that's what I used as my um, springboard mm -hmm. uh, into this because Tim had just given his report about this and I said and as a result I'd like to see what other belt tightening mm -hmm. that can be done and, and and what the effect on the budget would be this sort of thing mm -hmm. and we got into that <laughs> okay okay uh, minutes for Tuesday October 8th did you uh, what, what, what about uh, Okay. I sent some um, amendments in. They were distributed. And, oh, they were, okay. Yeah. I move we accept the minutes of the Board of Selectmen of Tuesday, October 8th, as distributed this evening. Second. Second. Are those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. And another. Okay. Next um, will be. A motion to move into executive nope, session. We have planning board meeting. Oh, planning board meeting. Sorry. Yeah. 
I missed those. We have to approve those minutes. Is that the idea? Yep. Yeah. I move that the we approve the minutes of the Board of Selectmen meeting of Monday, November 4th, a joint meeting with the Planning Committee as distributed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, now we're going to go. I need a motion to go into executive session not to return to open meeting. And for that, we also need a roll call vote. I move we go into executive session and not to, be, not to reconvene the regular meeting on the conclusion of that meeting. Uh, we have to say um, we have to say why we're moved meeting. Yeah, we're moved, we uh, move the board select and vote to approve the executive session minutes. Actually, that's a different one. That's different. That's what we do in the executive yeah. session, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just moved to go into executive. Session. Oh, yeah. Well, for well, yeah, for the approval of executive yeah. session minutes. Yeah, you give a, we, yeah. We still have right. to a teaser. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we have a motion to go into executive session. Second. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Oscar Willow, aye. Aye. Lewis, aye. Reed, aye. Arnold, aye. Brown, aye. Okay. You can. Can you possibly tell me what exactly what you discussed with the finance director? I couldn't quite hear you. It was a bit stuff over there. Oh, you uh, well, you know, um, Betsy Fell was I there. I know, I've got the article she's just written about this, but does it overlap with that? It is yep. exactly that. Okay, so that's what, what did we do there? Yep. Leave it there. Thank you very much.